how that works. All right, and now we sit and wait for the raid to come in, and then uh, we'll see what happens after that. Cool. And I still have not heard from Ron Richards and... So, so maybe we're going two hours. <laughs> we we might we might sure. uh, if nothing else, Jason Hell would, jo- would jo- will join us, but I haven't heard from Ron yet. Okay. Uh, uh, um, okay. Well, I mean, if you need to drop out, Richard, you know, I will get a boatload of shit if I'm on for more than an hour. <laughs> well, we could wake up Matt Flanagan live on a stream. That would be fun. <laughs> I'm sure that would be very exciting, and he would appreciate that. It's probably going to happen anyway, but off camera. Yeah. But but we'd be able to do it Maybe. With, with intention. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's that I have to turn a whole iMac makes it funnier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no that's that definitely increases the uh sort of like the Titanic turning. <laughs> i've missed you guys so much you 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 know we've been here right i know i know well i'll explain i'll explain there were some things some things happened well you know the year happened and the year i think continued to be shit for everyone so yeah yeah at least Matt ended up in the hospital twice. Oh. Yeah, it got real. Things got real. Yeah. Like, if I disappear hard from podcasting, like something has happened. Normally I just fade, but this was like a in the middle of America's Next Top Podcaster dropped an episode because I was in the hospital with Matt and then like never came back. That's more so, important. Yeah. It all it all happened. <clears throat> all Dude. right. The raid is coming in. <clears throat> all right. So let's hit this button here and hope everything goes well. <laughs> all right. Um hopefully they can hear you. Say something. Hello, hello. It looks, Thrones. Like they, it looks like they can hear you. We're going to go with they can hear you. All right. All right. Welcome to the uh, Let's Talk About or Not, maybe kind of Thrones episode of uh, the, the segment of the seventh annual New Year's Eve Diamond Club Streamathon, uh, presented, of course, by Rich Woman Misery. Uh, Got to throw that in there. You know, branding. I am Amos. I'm here with, of course, I'm going to go with the the minor co-host, Richard Gunther. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I'm willing to be that. I will hold what? that role. That I, I, I figured you would for only one person, and that would be Jenny Josephson. How are you, madam? I'm great. There's construction on the roof. There's construction over the fence. There's a dog, a cat, and a sleeping husband. We are in great shape and ready to go. <laughs> This sounds. I can prove it. It's a dog. Oh. Nice, nice. Oh, cuddles. See, you're much more inclusive in your podcasting activities. I shut the door and keep every living creature out of here. <laughs> I don't have the choice. <laughs> I just... Oh um, man. Okay, so all right. So how's your years been? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, <laughs> R- R- Richard bought a bunch of houses, sold a house, yeah. hasn't moved yet, and still building a house, and has complaints about colors. <sighs> okay. Yeah, although we 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 have color selections. We did. So when I last spoke with Anthony, I was saying that I was concerned that picking colors with a spouse who went to design school is a challenging exercise. We Was there a lot of talk about color theory? Oh, no, well, not so much that, just that, you know, strong opinions and beliefs and desires. And so last night we sat down and did it in an hour. Done. All the rooms. I am very excited. Oh, my God. Okay, Richard, what has Anthony been doing this past year? (laughs) 
Well, let's see. His family uh, geolocation has uh, changed quite a bit what? over the last year. Uh, for some, not all. Okay. Okay. And uh, he's been crazy, crazy, crazy busy with work doing, like, you know, official work stuff now. I know. It's really exciting to see him on DTNS or hear him. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's been a it's been an interesting year, and I have so many things going on outside of just DTNS. Like I, I'm there for DTNS, doing backup recordings and stepping in for Roger when he needs it and things like that. But as far as like what I'm involved in with with DTNS and so brilliant in general, it's so much behind the scenes stuff that people Yay. wouldn't even know about. So it's that makes really me awesome. really happy. That makes me really happy. Right. Uh, I have been um, uh, uh, <laughs> busy. I got a job last year in 2020 at QuickBooks, of all places. Um, I uh, have been working on a bunch of stuff with them for like sort of like cool comms projects. I really like it. They're nice people. Doesn't leave a ton of time for podcasting. Uh, we had some family trips to the hospital this year, like long two of them. And I, at one point, I had three different people in my family in three different hospitals in three different states. So, oh, yes. yeah, the podcasting f not just faded, but like hard crashed uh, into the into the podcast floor of expectation. So my apologies to you guys. Uh, oh, we we kept trying to podcast. Yeah, <laughs> no, no worries. Like it's been a year for all of us. I do have to ask, and I don't think. I don't know if any of us have discussed this. How many s degrees of separation away have we each been from COVID, if oh. any degrees? I've zero. I've been well, one, one degree. One. Both both the littles caught COVID Ooh. Uh, Ooh. over the summer, <clears throat> and and one of the bigs. So uh, my nineteen year old, the older the older twin. And my nine-year-old daughter and my six-year-old niece all had COVID at the same time. Mm. Mm. Ouch. Over their summer uh, vacation I... in, in Washington with their mom. Uh, this year, not as much. Last year, one of my colleagues from CBS News from a long time ago was one of the first people to die in New York. Oh. A bit, uh, before anybody really understood. Like, she had already only had one lung. Um, and that was that. So that really sucked. But um, other than that, you know, and then we had a friend's sister pass away from it that really affected us um, in 2020. But 2021, our friends got, you know, vaccinated and um, it all worked OK. And we're sort of sort of resuming a normal if limited life ish thing. Yeah. Except not now. Although I did go see Spider-Man twice. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, I need to see this film, but I'll be waiting. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not doing crowds. Yeah, I agree. Uh, hold on, I have to help my dog for a second. So talk amongst yourselves. Uh, <laughs> well, let's let's knock out the reason for for the streamathon. First of all, uh, we are raising money for extralife.org, and they channel all their. They're an organization of the Children's Miracle Network that uh, helps kids who are sick and their families. Um, make it through tough times and they do things like uh, help with uh, hospital bills. They help with transportation costs. They help uh, bring the kids entertainment and, um, you know, in improve their, their quality of life while they're in the hospital. Um, you know, between video games and visits and, and just being able to actually have a normal, semi-normal life while they are um, in the hospital and their families, things like that. So, Great organization, and the secondary aspect of it, the reason why we're all live and none, nothing is pre-recorded, is because we want to be here watching chats so that no one in the world has to spend their New Year's Eve alone because uh, depression is real, especially these last couple of years. I, I don't think anybody can deny that. And the last thing you want to do is have a day that everyone is celebrating that you feel alone and that's uh that's why we're all live in the chat and that's why the chat will be going on for all 27 hours and uh if you need help please reach out we have the resources we can we can send you to the places none of us are helping you uh directly uh, unless you just need someone to, to vent to but uh we have the resources we have all the links everything else we can get you the help or if you just need to say hey you know 
It's uh, It's been a rough year, and I need to chit-chat with somebody. Let us know. And uh, th- that's why we're here. We've raised um, just over $3,000 of our $6,600 goal for the year so far, and we're only in like hour eight. So we're doing pretty good on that. We've got a lot of big names coming up with uh, very large audiences, so we're hoping to shatter our goal this year. And that reminds me that it is tradition for Ritual Misery to donate the last three months of patrons um, in you know of our Patreon income to the Streamathon. So I'm about to do that. Jenny's back. Richard, if you would like to talk to her for a second, I'll go ahead and make that $150 Ooh. donation, bringing Ritual Misery, just Ritual Misery, over $1,000 and bringing the stream up near $3,500 for the year. Ooh, that's exciting. Very, I will very say... Nice. Yes, I will say that um, I would call this hour deeply uniquely qualified to talk about uh, <laughs> mental health and depression issues. Uh, me alone, uh, I have got a wide spectrum of uh, depressive uh, things going on in my own head, uh, for which I have recently um, found some solutions. Um, my whole family, I mean, like like literally almost every part of my family has struggled with mental health. Uh, over the years. So you are not alone. Uh, boy, oh boy, are you not alone. Uh, uh, and I have had seen the inside of a mental hospital uh, this year, not myself personally, but more times than you would like to know. So believe me, whatever is going on in your head, uh, whatever fears you have, whatever sadness you have, um, there is a way out. Um and uh, I've seen it. I've seen it happen over the course of this year. So I'm really grateful that Ritual Misery and uh, Diamond Club and Frog Pants and everybody else does this because um, it's really important. And I will be donating as soon as I figure out where to do that. <laughs> that would be, uh, <laughs> I believe the donation link is yolo420.com slash RMP2021. Oh, no, no. Put it in the chat. It is. It's put it in the Skype chat. No, put it oh, in the Skype in chat the Skype for me, chat. personally. Oh. Yeah, because I'm a diva. That's my and, one diva thing. <laughs> Actually, uh, Stephen Cogswell in the chat indicated that the link in the event itself on Twitch is incorrect, and <gasps> it, that is right. It's not working. So hopefully somebody can get that corrected. Yeah, they're they're throwing in chat. We can't update the page while while we're streaming. It makes it oh. well, Twitch makes it difficult to update anything regardless. So uh, All right, chat room. Chat. Yeah. Chat All room. Right. And now it's in the there you go. Once once an hour, once every fifteen minutes, somebody posts that link and <laughs> yeah. remind them that the link at the top is wrong. That's... I've tasked you with this, you fabulous people. Very good idea. Very good idea. I can't see the chat, so let me know if anybody says hi, because uh, I'm afraid that if I open up Chrome, problems will occur. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay, are we all back? Have we done the thing? Yes. I believe so. Okay, so what are we here to really talk about? Oh. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. we're, we're going to kind of talk about thrones by talking about the new teaser trailer not so yeah. new now yes but it, it is remarkable that we haven't gotten anything else since this trailer is it because we haven't gotten an obi-wan kenobi trailer so i don't think it's that remarkable <laughs> <laughs> Yeesh. I, I love the fact that between us we we all have different levels of tv and movie watching that we're involved in but when you strike a chord with something all three of us like it, like we all just dive in. Like the whole Star Wars, um, Disney properties, amazing, amazing. Mm-hmm. Mandalorian. I mean, I, I I was at Richard's house the first when the first episode dropped, and we yep. watched it, and we sat there and we looked at each other for a few minutes, and then like a little while later we watched it again. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> then, did, yeah. did we really see what we just saw? Holy shit. So, it was so um, good. So, okay. So, uh, yes. And, you know, we just did a Let's Talk About Star Wars where we talked about, um, you know, uh, the book of Boba Fett. And that was really fun. Um, so, the uh, this trailer, House of the Dragon... Uh, someone else start because uh, my thoughts are bitter, and 
Ooh. they should be safe for last. Wow. Okay. So why don't I start, since I always come into this with the most naive perspective. Sure. As a reminder to people, or if anybody here, which is likely, hasn't listened to Let's Talk About Thrones, I'm the guy who never read the books. And I'm the guy who watched the series for the first time as we recorded episodes of Let's Talk About Thrones. Mm -hmm. So I come into this trailer and it's just like any other mid medieval-ish tra teaser trailer battle thing with a bunch of people that I don't know, despite the fact that I recognize an actor or two. And oh, look, they're all blonde. So that kind of, you know, ties it back to people that I remember from Game of Thrones. But I don't necessarily know who any of these people are. And then doing some research to get different people's interpretations of the trailer, apparently a lot of this has just all been laid out. And so people know who these people are. I think... This looks fun. This looks cool. I'm looking forward to this. I don't have anything invested in the history or the story of these people, so I have zero expectations. So from my perspective, I can't wait. Uh, I respect that. I uh, Let me say that I'm looking forward to it because... Um, I want I want to see what happens with the series. I want to see what they can can do with it. Um but I don't know that I am I don't know if I'm ready to to wash away the angst I still have over season 8. Yeah. So cool. this is a chance for a fresh start in my mind. They could do a lot of good with it. Uh, they can take some of the lessons that, that, that you know, some of the cringier aspects, you know, the, the incestuous blondes and the uh, incestuous rape and, uh, uh, you know, all all the things. Basically, just how they treated women and minorities in general in the original series and um, and fix all that and make it much more inclusive and, and much funner to watch and, and less cringy. I will say that there are there are a lot of blondes in this, but I've definitely noticed more people of darker skin in this than I have in the entirety of the original run of the show. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, I have finished now giving money, um, to the extra life and I'm really excited about that. Uh, so now I can afford to rip this fucking thing to shreds. Uh, <laughs> PS, can we curse? Yes. <laughs> Important question. Can we use all the cusses? Uh, okay, here we go. So, first of all, I would like to start this not about thrones by talking about why the last man. Because why the last man on FX is a really instructive lesson in a property that was beloved that's out of its correct time. Right? So, why the last man was on and got canceled in the blink of a witch's tit because uh, it, it was just past its time. Like it was written in a time when nobody really, or not nobody, but like the broad population did not understand or think about the issues that face transgender people. Mm. And then the TV series was developed at a time when we are all so much more aware of all the issues. And it literally changed the way the story was told and made a side character more interesting than the lead character. Like it made the, the struggles and the travails of a transgender character way more interesting. And it also took away the threat of discovery from the lead character. So it's time had passed. Okay. Let me tell you that the time for blonde people boning their sister has also passed. Okay. I don't need to see it. If you put Matt Smith's naked butt on my television 
boning his sister, I'm going to have a problem. This is not going to be cool. I have spent like two seasons of Dr. Thrones watching this man coo over J- Jamie Dodgers. I don't need him boning his fictional sister. Okay? That's just for starters. We're fine. I don't want it or need it. Uh, the other thing is, yes, the more I watched the trailer, the more I was, va- and then I Googled who the people are. Like, I'm excited to see the sea snake. Like, I would like to know what an early stage Lannister is like. They're probably more intense, you know? So there are things, but like with the Star Wars properties, you just get an increasingly narrow slice of the storytelling pie to talk about. And I don't want, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I have thoughts, but like nobody wants to see Doctor Who bone his blonde sister. Can I say it one more time? (laughs) (sighs) Yes, yes. So one of the things that I had forgotten about was the whole incestuous thing about that family until I started watching some of these analysis videos Uh so again i'm looking at this kind of raw looking at it from the perspective i'm like oh cool that's doctor who i have no idea who he's with i have no idea that it may be his sister or that most likely even if that wasn't his sister he will probably be doing it with his sister right i totally forgot about that oh and let's just say that the time for that when that was even remotely like well, it's storytelling and it's in the past and that's fine. Nobody wants it. Like, let alone the, the, uh, uh, uh the fact that they borked season eight so bad, mm. uh, and just like shatteth the bed, um, <laughs> on the end of that show. Uh, the idea that like now we want to see more incest when you, borked the incest part of it so bad and then didn't even have it pay off in any way whatsoever. Like, you made us go through Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen without there actually being a point. Yep. So, uh, nobody's happy. Uh, My animosity has stirred the sleeping Flanagan. I've woken the dragon. (laughs) (laughs) My Flanagan is sleeping just off camera. Uh, He doesn't know what's going on. He's very confused. All he hears is me yelling. Uh, Again, I think that if the things we know about the Targaryen family and their heritage and their their single uh, trunk, the the, the, the single trunk tree that they tend to follow down, that's all kind of known and it can be mentioned, but I don't need to see it. And I think that's the key thing there is just don't don't go with the shock value that you went with the first time, because all you're going to get now at least from the three of us, is uh, early retirement of our interest. So yeah, I think there's some great stories to be told. I think there are um, there's a lot of source material to go by, which if you were keeping uh, keeping track on, let's talk about Thrones, when they left the source material is when things started getting wonky. So mm-hmm. there's tons of source material. It's not exactly scripted, but there's volumes of source material for them to rely on for these narratives. And I think they could really do a lot with it as long as they don't try to do too much and don't put too much of it in our face with, with the known history of the family. Yeah. I mean, I just, it's like, have you noticed to be not just so yelly about it? Have you noticed that generally speaking, like a lot of sex has disappeared from television to movies like there are obviously exceptions, like, but really that time is passing in a way um, uh, in the mainstream. Like there used to just be a lot more on camera sex and that whatever mores, uh, actors not wanting to do that, uh, not trusting, you know, whatever, like whatever it is like that is true. And so uh, these people were never trusted from like, you know, with, with, with depictions of sex on screen and, and I, I don't need them to keep trying. And I think they could do a good job of telling a story where they make sure you 
remember or know that this is how this family has has uh, progenated over the years without getting into any visuals, without without even like you you use the word hinting, and I I think they don't. I don't want to see visual hinting. I don't want to see a door closed behind a brother and sister or anything like that. There's no need to even make, make that like bring that into a scene other than recognizing that perhaps, you know, your mother and father are brother and sister or something, you know, it's bringing that into the dialogue as opposed to into a scene. Well, it's that rule about Hitler that once you bring Hitler into a conversation, uh, that's all the conversation ends because there's nowhere else you can go. There's like an actual rule, and I can't remember the rule, but uh, it's the same with incest. Like, <laughs> what else you get to talk about? But the thing, yeah. thank you, Renaigu. Thank you. Did I say that right? Yes. Uh, so yeah, uh, Godwin's Law. And, ooh, five minutes until 2022 in Bangladesh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Bhutan, British India, Ocean Territory, Omsk, Russia, and a small region of Antarctica. And, yes, Stephen Cogswell, once Hitler has been compared to incest, everyone has lost the argument. (laughs) Correct. (laughs) That's the point. (laughs) I'm on a T-shirt. House of the Dragons with that on the back. Uh, so yeah, so I I feel like you know I'm gonna watch it. It's H. Is it on HBO or just HBO Max? Um, I, it's I, it's HBO. It the the okay. trailer so has gonna, the HBO logo on yeah. it, yeah. so you I'm assuming it's HBO. You cannot spend that much money and put it on HBO Max. I don't care. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I'll watch it. 2022. I mean, nobody's given me an Obi Wan Kenobi trailer, so why not? Yeah. Yeah, just I'm just I'm just waiting to see how it goes. And I, I so are are we willing to commit to at least a review of the first episode as uh, let's sure. talk about Thrones? Oh yeah, we, yeah. We can at least give the first episode a thorough review and, and thrashing before we decide whether or not we're going to continue with the. Let's not with, talk about Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we did on Star Wars, which to kill time these four minutes before um uh it's New Year's in places. Um uh we reviewed in batches. So I probably wouldn't go a whole season, but you could go like four episodes at a time and then do an episode. You do it every month. Yeah. Right? Which seems more sustainable and unless this show is just bonkers brilliant out of the gate. Uh 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 <laughs> that would be enough for me. Unless yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Um, in or, which case, I'll love it more than anyone and forget we ever had this conversation. <laughs> Jenny in 2021. Maybe we should just do the Thrones thing once a month. Jenny, halfway through 2022. Oh my gosh, can we do this five days a week? This is yeah, brilliant. We <laughs> so let me, let me ask some questions. Is this the same showrunner team? No. There's a whole other dude, but again, a dude in charge of it. Okay. So I, you know, I don't, it's actually a person I don't know. Uh, and uh, that's fine. Uh, so we'll see. I always like to give people chances. Yep. Um, I don't think, you know, I, I'd like to see what their writer's room looks like. Yep. Uh <laughs> I'm just laughing at the chat room. Yeah. Jen needs to podcast lol. I know. <laughs> I was just telling the guys that I've been on more podcasts in the last 24 hours than I have in like the past year. Yeah. Uh, me too. So it's crazy. I, I, I'm happy that Jawadi is back doing the yeah. soundtrack. That'll be great. I'm very excited about that. Yep. Continuity, very important because that soundtrack was baller. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, I, that's one thing, as much as the show as you might have hated, the soundtrack and the ambient sounds and things like that, like the sound design of the show, just the overall oral a- aesthetic of the show was amazing. Very good. 
Yeah. And I, I really, um, yeah. I mean, the quality of an HBO show is always so good that just for the quality alone, I'll give it like a season, you know? Um, you 60 seconds. Woo! Get ready, small region of Antarctica. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Alice Springs and, and Bangladesh. Was I wrong? I guess I was wrong. I trust Rene Aigu yeah, he, much he's, more than... He's been, uh, he's been really keeping track of okay. all of it for everybody, so... Okay. Yeah. Um, I certainly wish Bhutan the best year. Um, I would not want to be in Omsk. It would be very cold in Omsk. <laughs> it might be warmer in Antarctica than it is in Omsk, believe it or not. Isn't it summer down there? I don't know. Yes. What do I know? Maybe? No? I to don't... the extent that the pole gets summer? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had friends go to Antarctica kind of around this time and had New Year's there. And you can walk six, around and... Five, uh, ooh, six, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. 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 Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year. May um, your 2022 be better. <laughs> Happy New Year to those of the British Indian Ocean Territory avoiding extradition. I, I'm just going to just Omsk sounds like a mistake. It sounds like something that the Queen of Hearts would say in uh, the, the, the Tim Burton version of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? I realized actually the one exception to nobody wants to see Matt Smith uh, bone his sister is if uh, he ended up hate boning Margaret on the crown. I would have been OK with that, but only if it had occurred off screen. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! They have some chemistry, let me tell you. So I would have been okay with that because God wow. rest his soul, Philip was a dirty birdie, and that would have been. I, I think it happened. I think it's headcanon for me that that one hundred percent happened. <laughs> wow! But yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. So there is one exception to the Will Matt Smith bone his sister rule that I would accept. <laughs> I would accept it in this upcoming season when they're all very, very, very old. Well, that's uh, sister-in-law, so you yeah, know. Yeah, so that's just horrible. That's not incest. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, there's, there's different levels, all right? Like you gotta. <laughs> yeah, we'll take quarter-hour time zones. Bring them on. Yeah, uh, okay. uh, we got Nepal coming up in a, in a few yeah, minutes. Yeah, I, I really want to I want to say them all out loud because you know Bangladesh has been having a year, uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, all the fans, man. Uh, so you know, happy New Year to everybody there. May your 2022 be better than uh, any other year. Um, so let's see what else. Okay, so I feel like in the next uh, 15 minutes, our very loose plan was to talk about all the things we thought we were going to podcast about, but Jenny didn't have time to do. Uh, <laughs> starting with the long-awaited, I mean, this goes back to 2020, the long-awaited Wonder Woman 84 quick review. Oh, yeah. Richard, mm. start us off. All right. I was so looking forward to this. And I my my one-sentence summary of it is that I enjoyed the film, even though it had a ton of problems and it was about 45 minutes too long. So uh, there are problems that, it, it, you know, I live in D.C. And so when I see a movie completely screw up the geography of D.C., that really annoys me, let alone the fact that, A, you would not be allowed to have anyone in the fly zone over D.C., when it's the 4th of July because fireworks not good with planes. Also, by the way, um, it just happened to be July 4th. Like, th there's so you know many the famous things. Gary Marshall rule. Said it on a holiday. Uh, <laughs> That's literally a thing that Gary Marshall said to Matt in a room one time. He said, okay. when in doubt, said it on a holiday. And then he literally proceeded to make movies named after holidays. <laughs> But so Sounds many right. problems, so many problems, uh, like like just the way the wishes worked. And sometimes they seemed to take something. Sometimes they didn't. What was the rule on that? The way 
that uh, they, the, the museum of planes just, they happen to all be fueled. Just pick one. Don't need a key. Just fueled. Don't need a... <laughs> <laughs> and of course well, you can just to go and it had a drive, runway drive over to the to the dullest runway to uh uh or taxi over there to take i mean yet so many problems but i loved the score that helped that helped a lot um i loved the opening games sequence i thought that was actually cool i liked the lesson from that sequence i thought that was really cool it got started really strong and then just went down hill from there okay okay anthony yes i'm going last <laughs> <laughs> um i how, how, to, how to express this there were technical issues with the production the script that i thought were absurd such as an aircraft being able to fly across the entire atlantic a, a, a jet aircraft a, a fighter be able to fly across the entire Atlantic on a single tank of fuel. This is a problem I've had with other movies, and it's a. What'd you do for a living? Remind us. Remind us all. Oh, I was an aircraft mechanic for twenty-four years. Yeah. For, In, for the Air Force, yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Working we on, on fighters and on heavy. Someone and... knows how far a plane can fly. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. So that that is that that bothered. That was the first thing that really took me out of the story. Um, that being said, cause I, I live in the suspension of disbelief when I'm watching a movie, I love to just watch the movie and be in the, in the situation and not necessarily worry about, um, you know, the, the te technicalities of it and what the feasibility and all that kind of stuff like that's not, I don't, but when you take me out of it completely, it just irritates the piss out of me. Um, now other than the technicalities of it, other than the the power station with com a computer lab just happens to be, just, other than that, that, global internet doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> Come um, on. The date rapey aspect of it, which I'm sure Jenny will get further into, immediately yeah, threw flags up for me, like. It sounds good the way that you present it. If you don't think about it too hard, sure, maybe, I guess. I'm not the kind of person that doesn't want to think about it. So it immediately was like, there's something wrong here. Um, Let's just say it out loud. Wonder Woman problematically boned an unaware man. Yes. And it's for... not okay just because she's hot. Repeatedly repeatedly and took his body into danger right like actual danger like nobody said that was okay i don't care that it's chris balala nobody said it's okay to take right. a man into harm's way and potentially kill him because you miss your boyfriend from the plague years <laughs> all that being said my favorite part about the movie literally my favorite part about the movie was the uh the games at the beginning i i thought that was th just the whole flashback sequence from from the Isle of Amazon or where whatever the name of the island is. Um, everything pre-Diana Prince was my favorite part of that movie. And it was expertly done. It was amazing. Yeah, they went way above and beyond the capabilities of any normal human, but that's what a super, uh, you know, superhuman movie is about, superhero movie. Uh, I thought it was great. I thought the CGI actually held up really well and was it was beautiful. And it was really well done. And... Um, yeah, I some something about uh uh oh what the hell's her name? The the mother, the lady that played the mother. Uh Robin Oh, uh, Connie Nielsen. Uh, no, uh, uh uh Anyway. Uh right? Robin Wright. That's, that's, she's that's not the mother, aunt. She's a trainer. Yeah. The yeah. aunt. The aunt. Um she's god, can she possibly be in anything where she doesn't just rock it out of the out of the world and make it just amazing? Yeah. I mean, I mean, the she is no. She will always. Be. She she took a character that you shouldn't have cared about in Forrest Gump and made her ama and made it amazing, and she's just done everything awesome since. So yeah, love it. Okay, so I have thoughts. First, my thoughts. I need to preface my thoughts was the amount to which this movie pissed me off. It has to be set in the context of how much I loved the first movie, right? So like. I loved the first movie like a, like it was a cold clock to the head. 
Like it was so good and it was so beautiful and it had such a great message and it had Chris Pine, who's my favorite all time Chris. There is no other Chris for me. Chris Pine. Oh, wrong. Like, I know, I know. Like, uh, believe me, I understand the, the relative values of Chris's, but my personal Pine is Chris. I mean, whatever. Um, so. I wanted him back in the movie. I was really excited to see him back in the movie. But um, here's the bottom line. Sometimes as a screenwriter, you try too hard, right? Look, there was a watch. The watch had his DNA on it. You, they could have just gone Jurassic Park and grown a Steve in a lab to try to distract Wonder Woman <laughs> and then killed him again. And I could see the screenwriters being like, oh, but we already killed him. It's a repeated beat. We can't do that. And oh, Jurassic Park already did getting the dinosaur. Blah, 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 blah. Just make it simple. Just make it simple. Just give us our Chris Pine back and then take him away again and bring him back in the third movie. Instead, you created Wonder Woman, the champion of love and respect and, and, and goodness and sapphic virtue. You made her a date raper. And I can't get over it because then it undermines the whole rest of the, like, just touch my lasso and feel the love around the whole world. Mm. It completely undermined that. And I'm pissed because, like, you know what? Chris Polala is a great actor. Just put him in the movie. Like, fine. Or give us a hint of just dare to have the movie without Chris Pine and put him in the next one, right? So that you only have to bring them back. But like, ugh, let alone Kristen Wiig as Chitara or whatever her name was. Um, uh, uh, don't do that to my Wonder Woman. And I, I cannot believe that somebody actually went ahead and and didn't think that one through. Yeah. W w I don't know much about the movie industry, near, not nearly as much as Jenny would know, just about the film industry in general. Um, but there's a writer's room, right, where they like literally sit and write and throw TV. ideas off each other. For TV. For movies, generally speaking, uh, if it's one person writing the movie, that person is writing in tortured solitude. If there's a couple people that have been involved, they're usually at different stages. Sometimes mm. there's writing partnerships, and then they're having that writing room conversation out loud. But mostly movies are like torturous solo affairs. Okay. Is but, there but, an editorial process? Well, uh, that's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like either, either way, somewhere between yeah. the writer's group or the writer yeah, there's, and there's, all the development There's a gap between there and what we see on screen. Yeah. Anywhere in that gap, they could have fixed so much of that movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't know what the process is. It probably goes through 585,000 hands between the writer having the script handed off and it becoming an actual thing on the screen. But anywhere in that process, they could have fixed the majority of that movie with very minor edits. Like how touches. did Patty Jenkins not see that? <laughs> like how did the lady director not see that? I mean, I right. understand the argument that they wanted Wonder Woman to fall, right? To have her eighties moment of indulgent excess, but like it had to be day rape. Like it couldn't have just been selfish something, something like, it, come on like that. I don't know. I just, it, that was like you, you and the airplanes, me and the day rape. I did not like it. And I was really pissed that it happened and it really affected my love for the characters. Yeah, yeah. it could have just been cocaine, for God's sakes. Like, give one, well, have Wonder Woman snort some coke. Right. And dance <laughs> on a dance. It was the 80s. Come on. <laughs> so many ways to be bad the 80s that don't involve. Ugh. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. yep. Yeah, so and, that was and, and another aspect of that is when you take a, a female character, which we don't have enough of, and they have a, myst a, a mystique about them, they have this, this, aura of dominance and of power and then you inject immorality into that like a direct injection of just straight up immorality um yeah it, yeah just not good like why would and also it, like that movie the whole premise could have worked where he he was grafted onto someone else's body where they almost did it and then she was like god damn it i can't do this right or they did it you know like they, or they, I don't know, or they even just addressed it, right? Like, or they, I don't know, like just making him like her at a party was not enough. So like, there's, there's a bunch of ways they could have mitigated it while keeping their stupid graft him onto someone else's body plot. Yeah. Um, 
that would have mitigated the harm, but then it would have also pointed it out. So the meeting that you're thinking about, the development executive meeting was like, they probably pitched a couple solutions for it. It's like, no, that just points it out. Let's not do it. <laughs> Most people won't notice because it's yeah. 2019, 2020. Yeah. So anyway, uh, there you go. That's that was our Wonder Woman. Let's not talk about Thrones. Wait, from I have more oh, thoughts. Oh, oh, thought oh. One minute. One minute. So okay. <laughs> Invisible plane. Okay, fine. The invisible plane is still moving the clouds and the smoke from the fireworks. You're telling me that's not detectable by radar? Help me understand that. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. Right? Okay. So other thing, thing I liked, her having to give him up. I think they did that scene very well. And again, it makes me think if only they had just not wrap not wrap them together the way they did she could still have had to give him up and they could have had a really effective farewell the way they did also kind of like that somehow she learned to fly i don't understand that but it's kind of fun it happened off screen <laughs> she had a lot of time she had a lot of time um uh, happy new know? year to nepal yeah uh, Naya Barsha ko derai derai subhak ama na. That wow! Is, Look yeah. at you. Yeah, I tried. I tried wow. for this one. Uh, right. That means uh, good wishes for the new year in Nepali. Very nice. That's awesome. Very nice. Um, and again, hope it's better. Hope it's a better year. Yep. My my final thought on Wonder Woman would be an answer to your question richard and that is that invisible is a loaded term because <laughs> invisible to what along what spectrum invisible to visible light or infrared ultraviolet invisible in, in, invisibility doesn't Reflective. impart yeah in, invisibility doesn't impart uh, the inability or the the lack of reflectiveness for sound waves and things like that. Like there's right. so much going on. Like, it, it, yeah. So yes, I was on board with the movie. I understood it had problems and things like that. And then when they went, essentially, as soon as they got in the airplane, I was like, I'm done. All this uh, said, I've watched it four times. <laughs> and I've probably watched the game scene a dozen times. Nice. Yeah. I you know, I watched it twice games. to make sure I wasn't just in a mood, right? Like, <laughs> I wanted to make sure, like, I watched it when I was in a really good mood to be like, oh, I was probably just in a mood. And then, no, like, it still bugged me. And so that was a shame. So, God, I really hope that they they fix it in the third one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how are they going to fix it? Dream Sync was the whole thing? No, they can. They just <laughs> redeem her, or bring better. her back, have her discuss it. You know, like the idea that Wonder Woman is going to have to get Me Too'd is upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't it, have to happen. It it it, it didn't. And I, yeah. I, yeah, it's how it's, it's how also exciting. a strange world where we where we say Wonder Woman is going to get Me Too'd. But the, the writers, the director and, the, and all yeah. that, are yeah, they're not. It, it's fair gosh, point. It's, I mean, we're going to throw that on the character and not the people behind the character. I don't know. You're right. You're right. I don't know. Of course, I'm also the person that uh, just recently bought a new watch, and with my new watch, I bought the uh, the the Pride Loop band to be hey, a good that's ally. That's so cool. And then, nice. and then I was immediately questioned as soon as I put it on as to why I had to get the Pride one, and I was like, well, because I'm trying to be a good ally to people that are not like me. And they said, aren't you a good ally already? And I said, that's not for me to judge. And now I'm questioning whether or not. Uh, I should be. <laughs> no, wear it. It's my cool. Allyship. Rainbows are cool. <laughs> Bow ties are cool, and rainbows are cool. Okay, and fezes are cool. So, I know more people. I don't know if I told you this story or not. I know more people that are like posting ra rainbow flags or doing the rainbow on their um, <clears throat> their avatar that that are just advocates. And that just amazes me. That's wonderful. I mean, I remember from my closeted days where like just the, the concept of that would be unheard of. We had a situation in our neighborhood where 
a male couple with kids that lives about two blocks from us in our community, somebody stole the rainbow flag that they had put out on Pride Month. And <clears throat> they posted to the bulletin board and said, hey, not cool. Can someone please, you know, give this back? What's going on? And so they put a new one up and someone stole it again. So a community member, so just someone who lives in our housing community here, bought 50 rainbow flags. Wow. And about half of the homes around the entire neighborhood put rainbow flags out. Mm. That was so friggin' cool. That is so friggin' cool. Yeah. Yep. I was going to say somebody wake up Wonder Woman and get her on this shit because this is <laughs> worthy of her detecting skills. Um, oh, I have another Wonder Woman thought. I know yes. we're past Wonder Woman. The mall scene used to be one of my old shopping malls here oh. in the D.C. area. Is that so, Was that Crystal City? No, actually. Oh. Believe it or not, Crystal City is still alive. Wow. Um, that was at Landmark Mall a little bit further down the interstate but in Alexandria, Virginia. And I used to live right around the corner from there. I used to shop there all the time. It was wild to see that place alive again because it's a dead mall. It's it's empty and locked. Wow. And I love that mall sequence. That was great. That was a great <laughs> sequence. Like, there's a lot of great sequences yep. in that movie. I'm not going to complain. Yep. Did you know that uh, right as we hand over, we're going to get to wish 1.38 billion or so people a happy new year? Jeez, that is just insane. Yeah. Can you imagine? I just like, I, oh man, I loved India. I, Wait, I think I'm ready to go back. That we get to wish more people Happy New Year than anybody else in the streamathon? I think it does. I, I think that would be a great thing for the chat to look up and verify because, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't I mean, expect me to do it. I'm currently trying to coordinate with uh, our follow-on act, yeah, uh, Ron I'll Richards remember. and Jason Howell, uh, to bring I'll them remember. into the yeah. call and drop you guys from the call in an orderly manner. And totally understand. <laughs> you know, China, but doesn't China have multiple time zones? So uh, no, here, well, well, probably well, India does too. They, they, so China has, I believe, they have multiple time zones, but there is an official government time that overrides time all so, of yeah. them. All right. Okay. So, so yeah, China. China's gonna, and and there's it's been a it's been a thing of transition for a while because in the far west of China, I just oh gosh, I just watched a, a show on this. Uh, in the far west of China, it's like a five hour difference between the two, but you can only officially recognize the government time. But then when they're amongst friends and family, they'll recognize the local time, and there's a trend on that going away as younger generations come in and just accept the government time even though it doesn't match anything at all, which only proves to my point that we should just all be on UTC and call it a fucking day. But that's me. <laughs> like, I'm so no, tired I'm of... all for UTC. As someone who used to book satellites for uh, a living, yeah. uh, I would be all for UTC. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of, yeah, I'm just, I'm tired of local time zones and, and shit like that. And plus, uh, unfortunately, they make the streamathon only one hour long, but It'd be okay. I would manage. It'd be a hell of an hour. <laughs> yeah. Just pure chaos. It'd be great. <laughs> we just have Jenny in the background wishing every country a uh, happy new year in their own language just as fast as yep. she could stumble through it. Yep. It'd be great. <laughs> um, so, all right, closing thoughts. Uh, we got uh, the, 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 the eight minutes for closing thoughts on 2021. All right. Um, closing thoughts on 2021. I'm going to be happy to see it go because 2022 promises to be exciting for me. I'm going to be moving to a new home and hopefully have a little bit more of my life back as I stop with real estate transactions. Yeah. They take, they suck the life out of you. I swear. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's more than an investment of time. It's an investment of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm still a renter. <laughs> Forever renter. Yeah. 
Uh, Anthony, uh, do you have a uh, mind space to talk about uh, 2021 into 2022? I am just going to say that 2020 was a big ball of shit. 2021 was at least a big ball of shit plus one. Like it was yeah. incrementally better than 2020 was. Um, I'm hoping that 2022 continues that trend, you know, maybe exponentially better, but at least not, let's not, let's not lose any ground from where 2020 left us. Um, yeah. so that's all I'm going to say is, is 2021 plus one equals 2022. And I'm hoping that at least a little bit better. So, mm. yeah. How about you, and Jenny? For- for me, I just want to keep all my family members out of the hospital this year. How about one year with no family members in urgent care or a hospital? I would be so grateful. That's uh, that sounds good. Yeah, that that's my good. that's my only serious wish for 2022. Just please, everyone, stay healthy. And by family, of course, um, I mean all of you because you are my family. And even though I forget it for months at a time, it's really great to be back doing some casting. Yeah. Um, All right. I have I have added Jason and Ron. See if they pop up in here. There's Ron. All right. There's Ron. Hello. Hello. Hi, Ron. Happy New Year, everybody. And there's Jason in his rented space in uh, an undisclosed camping location. Oh dear. Oh (laughs) man. Do I have Do I have stories? Can you hear me? Okay. Like literally, I just set all this up in like ten minutes. (laughs) We can. We can indeed. Oh my goodness. Wow. Hey, what's up, Richard? What's up, Jenny? What's up, Ron? What's up, Amos? Hello. How you doing, oh. Jason? Great Hi, to see everybody. Here. Oh my goodness. Well, you see you. Ron, I don't think up. we've met. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, too. Jenny, it's been ages. Good to see you again. Been ages. <laughs> yeah. And I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> we are so excited. You guys are going to get to wish 1.38 ish billion people a happy new year in your first minute on the air. Oh my gosh. That's what? amazing. Yeah. What, what city crosses, what what, what region That's crosses into New Year? Whole, I don't know if it's the whole of India, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Say, a whole lot of it. Yeah. A whole lot, a whole of, lot India. of India. Wow. Yeah. And, Guys, and I, 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 I wonder how much bandwidth they all have to watch this, because I know that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a not a great mobile bandwidth area. But. No, 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 no. But uh, they can catch it later on Twitch. <laughs> right on. There you go. Yeah, hey, exactly. Be- before we get out of here, do we anyone want to do quick uh, resolutions? Ooh, okay. Uh, my New Year's resolution is to finish a novel. I'm just going to keep it oh. nice, and tropey, and boring. Nice. R- right, writing know. one or reading yeah. one? <clears throat> uh, right. Okay. Right. <laughs> look, look, it's a valid I mean, question. I could, I mean, I could, I could relate to the reading one. I'm, the, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thirty percent into the new Neil Stevenson. I feel like it's never going to end. So it's, <laughs> there you uh, go. Yeah. So that's my that's my New Year's resolution. Nice and easy and simple. Okay. How about you, All Richard? Right. Uh, mine is to drink less, podcast more, and see more of Jenny. Oh. Same. Good one. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. Um, How about you? I I don't do New Year's, New Year's resolutions. I made my, my last New Year's resolution was in 2010, and I resolved to never make another resolution. And thus far, I've held up on that. I do, wow. however, have yearly themes, which is a thing from um, CGP Grey that uh, I, I, I follow up on. Last year's uh, theme was a year of commitment, in which case I kind of dived into. Uh, all of my podcasting stuff and and made it more of a thing this year. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the theme is going to be, but I think it's going to be the theme, the year of family. Cause I really need to refocus mm. on, on family and the way the themes work is you don't have a set goal, like a hard number. You just want to see a trend towards something. I like um, that. So uh, I, I think the year of commitment was a success. Now I need to kind of rebound from that hardcore commitment and, returning to the family. So I think it's going to be your family. Okay. Nice. Ron? I mean, it's hard to follow that. I, mean, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I was going to make a joke that the, the making a resolution not to make a resolution is like the ma- wishing for three more wishes. But, um, uh, but, but I, I really respect that. That's fantastic. I think similar, you know, picking up on the theme, I think for me, I think you know, for me, you know, and family, commitment really and family, are both really important to me, but I think, you know, I would, my resolution or theme might be more around balance between the two, you know, because it's just so easy to get sucked into this vortex at my desk all day and not be there for my 
our kids, and not but be there for my kids, but that really is also easy to be, really easy to be, you know, sit down and play you know, for hours, sit down and, and play and for hours, work behind, and leave work so behind. So I think a nice resolution is to find balance between the two. So. And Jason. And Jason. My New Year's resolution. My New Year's resolution is to reposition this camera so it doesn't look like it's all the way up there, and I'm looking at it. I was going to say, maybe to plan your schedule a little better. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I did everything in my power to make this happen. We'll get into the story. We'll get into the story around everything that has happened leading up to me stepping into this office here in a bit. I think my New Year's resolution has to do with music because I have been spending a lot of time not spending a lot of time not doing music lately, and I'm feeling it like resurging of me. So I want of me. So I want to kind of make a commitment to do that. So to do that. Already kind of started. Already kind of started setting up the foundation of that at the house and getting my my space ready and everything. And now I can feel like 2022. I'm going to make more music. So that makes me feel like a, a more whole human being when I'm doing that on a regular basis. So and, and Jason my... and Jason makes very good music. So uh, legit, oh, we're all lucky legit. for that. Yeah. Uh, it, it, just for so everybody knows in the chat that that was a uh, as I added everybody to the call, their audio is also coming through, but it, then it's also coming through as, as combined stream. So I had to turn off their individual audios. So the audio problem should be fixed, and you can now understand. And it'll all be in the recording that will get posted later anyway. So, <laughs> all right, sweet. And we are five. Look, welcome, welcome to live radio. Four, uh, yeah. three, <laughs> two, one. Happy, Happy New, New Year. 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 Happy New Year. All right. Uh, awesome. And Jenny and Richard, before you leave, before you cut out, uh, just yes. a quick update. We are now at $3,700, 3719 of our $6,457 goal, which is exactly $1 more than what we got last year. Because, again, incremental. I'm always looking for the positive trend. Um, and for the Ritual Misery, for ours, for this stream and for my uh, for, for the main podcast, uh, our team has uh, surpassed our goal. Well, our, our, our initial goal was only 500. Uh, now we have 1,281 of our huge goal of $2,000. So, All right. um, and we haven't even gotten into the really big names. Like we have some people coming up later on in the show I mean that. That you got two big names right here. I, yeah. I, I know, I know. I, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> right, exactly. How do you take that? We're not even at the big names. Thanks for joining, <laughs> guys. Podcaster here, like is well, the literal. We're happy to we're happy thing. to lay out the carpet for yes. the ones who will bring <laughs> in the most money. If, if I could define my if I could sakes. if I could define my podcasting career in any way, I would say I'm a great opening act. So. <laughs> Uh, you, you you can conflate it however you want, but when Bryce pulls in over two thousand dollars in during his one hour, yeah, we all gotta yeah. kind of back all off a little bit. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair so, enough. um, sure. and right. he, he's well, coming up later on this hour. Uh, for me and Richard and Jenny, we are about to bounce out and and let these other two gentlemen have their uh, have their say. Uh, any, la any last words, you two? No, Matt Smith, blonde bonking his sister in twenty twenty two. Okay. Amen. Most Amen. of those words I don't even understand. I'm going to go <laughs> donate now, and you should go do that too. There we go. Let's help some kids. Yep. All right. All right. Amos, before you drop off, before mm -hmm. you drop off, mm -hmm. uh, and this is stupid behind the scenes stuff here, but I'm uh, I'm looking. The, the chat is not happening in Discord, but it's happening on the Twitch page. Is that right? Yes. That and I need on, to follow. And it's yeah, on the, uh, ritual, the Ritual Misery Twitch page, right? Yes. Got it. Okay, cool. Okay. So, so I need to open that yep. up in my scramble of, of links. Yep. And I okay. need to recenter you guys so you can actually be seen on the screen with everybody yes. dropping off. That. Yeah. <laughs> and I need to fix my lighting. There we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, this day. This this like week. This yep. has been crazy. We'll have to talk about it. All right, yeah, gentlemen. The right. floor is yours. Keep an eye on chat and they will be so kind as to remind you when the New Year's things are going on. Awesome. Um, and uh, I'll be here if you need anything. But other than that, I'm going to be, uh, you know, doing the stuff behind. Awesome. All Love right. It. Thanks for your right work, on. man. Thank you. Okay. All right. I am pulling things up. I'm doing that thing when we start a podcast where I, like, reposition things on my screen, make it look all comfy and nice. Although I'm still not uh, seeing that dang chat appearing. I got uh, it. I got it popped out, too. So I need to log oh. in though, don't I? So, but I can talk to people, right? All right, cool. My yeah. stupid, oh man, I need to get a window shade here. 
because I've got window shades in front of me, but I got light coming in here. And it's just, yeah, I just, it's, I keep manually riding the, the lighting controls, but it all depends on what the sun is doing at any given yes. point. <laughs> well, you could be like me in, in a random office with, it would appear to be lights right there that just aren't on. It's just the lights, of course, that are right above me. So everything <laughs> that I actually want to show, you know, like my face, so that when I'm talking, you can actually see my face, uh, is all dark. But yeah. I'm, I'm doing the best I can, Ron. This it's has all, been quite the morning. Do. It's all you oh can do, goodness. man. So, uh, so why don't you tell everybody about your adventure and how we got here? Let's start there. Well, for, <laughs> first, first, should we tell everybody who we are and like, I mean, I don't sure. know, if, you know, kind of, yeah. So, Jason, I defer to you. Who are you? So, oh, what do you do? Okay. Well, I am Jason Howell, um, and I host a number of shows uh, on the Twit Network, Twit.tv. Primarily, I'd say the show that that I've been doing the longest is with uh, my co-host, who is here with me, Ron Richards. And uh, it's all about Android. And so we talk every week about, uh, well, let me give you three guesses, uh, Android and Google and, you know, everything in, in mobile devices and smartphones and tablets and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, yeah, just working for twit.tv and making music on the side. What about you, Ron? Yeah, so uh, I am Ron Richards, and I've been podcasting since 20, 2005. Um, first I, I was out on, uh, was on iFanboy, which is a podcast all about comic books and did that after listening to, you know, now my friends, Leo and Kevin and Prager and everybody do start this week in tech back in the day and figured I'd start a podcast. And then, uh, years later I got to uh, move to San Francisco and, and, and do some cool stuff at revision three. And then, uh, made friends with Mr. Jason Howell and Tom Merritt and the whole gang at CNET. And then when, uh, Jason jumped over to Twitter and started and Eileen Rivera started all about Android. I was honored that they uh, invited me to join. And then 11 years later. Yeah. We're about 11 yeah. years now. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So which here we are. Yeah. Talking about Android for 11 years, uh, which is just crazy. But, uh, but how, how can we find 11 years worth of, of stuff to talk about with Android? I have no with anything idea. really yeah, with anything. Well, that, I mean, that, that's the real, I mean, that's the funny thing is that like, I've been talking about comic books. I've been talking about movies. I've been talking about books and music and tech for, I mean, now it's going to be 2022. So it's the better part of 17 years, like longer, the longer than my professional career of like doing what is I'm actually paid for. I've been doing this nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So. All uh, right. Now I see this. Now I see the chat, I believe. Yeah. Now I've got the chat. I got the, I got the uh, link. I was like in back channel uh, trying to like scramble to get it, but I'm not yeah. seeing any movement in chat yet, but I'm sure it will appear there because I followed the, yeah. the right link. Yeah. So we've been doing this for 11 years and um, we also realized kind of leading into this that like we do talk about Android all the time. So maybe this is an opportunity to sure. Hey, there we go. Now, now we're getting some movement. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, uh, Ren Agu. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing Wabbit Magic. Appreciate it. Um, maybe this is an opportunity to talk about Android. Yes, sure. If anyone who's you know following along in the chat room uh, this New Year's wants to ask us any questions about Android or Google or really. Beyond that, this is kind of an opportunity for us to talk about anything because we've got a lot of passions, right? Like my, mine, you know, I'm, I'm big into uh, music. I, I have a fascination with real estate. Ron, you, you know, you, you have a side business that's all about pinball. Like we've got yeah. other, th other facets that aren't just Android and technology. Um, so. uh, let's back up to your fascination about real estate. I've known you for 15 years. I've never heard about this. <laughs> we don't really talk about that kind of stuff on a technology podcast. What are you into about real estate? Like, like you like you like hang out on Zillow or what's the deal? No, no, no. About five <laughs> years ago, we st I started getting an interest in like real estate investment, and okay. uh, you know, over the years, we've invested in real estate in a few wow. different areas around the country, and uh, and through that, I've just kind of been interested in real estate in general. Just like it's it's just interesting to me. I don't know. I can't explain it. Once so I started say, when you like say diving estate, in, I got when, more and more interested. When you say real estate, is it like commercial real estate or residential? No, real estate residential. Or residential. Yeah, residential. So you're you're like, are you a landlord? Um, more or less. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. How many, how many properties do you, I'm sorry, I don't want to ask anything, <laughs> uh, any, uh, personal questions. You're like, I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. This uh, is six, to me. six different properties. You have six properties. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I will tell you one thing. The one thing I learned from reading gone with the wind was that, um, land is the best investment you could make. Right. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, everyone I know who has been, um, successful, 
Um, so like, a, a, you know, a, a really great, interesting, you know, uh, kind of success story here is that like, so years and years and years ago, I used to work, uh, for the company that publishes the walking dead comic books. Mm -hmm. And I got, I got the opportunity for, you know, several years to work very closely with Robert Kirkman, the guy who started the walking dead and, and, you know, good guy, good friend. Um, and he started his own company that housed all his properties and once the walking dead was a hit, one of the first things he did was bought the office building where his company was headquartered, you know, be, and I don't think they're there anymore. I think they moved, but the idea was is that invested in real estate, like invested right. in that, that, you know, like take the money and put it in something that will appreciate because, you know, real estate, you know, isn't, a, isn't, you know, property doesn't at, go away. Like right, land, exactly. land value fluctuates, but yeah. there's always something, there's always, there's always a tangible thing that exists when you're yeah. talking about real estate. Yeah, yeah. And if, and if you own it, then there's always some sort of value, whether that value is good or bad, you know, depends on how it fluctuates, but I, yeah, it's just kind of fascinating I, to me. I would say, I would say also that if, if, uh, on my bingo card for what we'd be talking about here today on New Year's Eve, uh, real <laughs> you estate, didn't expect that. <laughs> real estate was not one of them. So, uh, yeah, yeah sorry to surprise you with that rod hey look yeah. we haven't been in the same space to like talk about this stuff true in years i know in years point. i know yeah it's really upsetting <laughs> it's really but uh well that's fascinating how about that yeah. all right so uh so why are you in an anonymous office Oh, okay. All right. All right. So I'm, I'm, uh, Which, by the way, I want to give, I want to give props in the chat for, uh, all about apartments. That was very funny. So good job, Ben. Like <laughs> Pretty that. much any topic we talk about ends up with all about, uh, prefix or preface to it. Um, okay. So I am in Carmel by the sea. If, wow. Uh, I love Carmel. That's, that's yeah. where I am. I'm located right now. Carmel has uh, not very good um, cell coverage. I've I've realized we are camping about 40 minutes south of here at Big Sur at a campground at Big Sur. And it's total winter camping, right? Like woke up this morning, seeing our breath. You know, there was condensation. We're in, we're in a tent, what's called a tent cabin. But it's basically, I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like, right? Like it's a, it has a cabin structure. There's wood framing and cots, like beds, bunk beds inside and everything. But that's really about it. Wood floor and everything. Everything else is kind of like a, a tent on the outside, but a little bit thicker than that. Um, but it's not keeping out any cold, in other words. So, you know, it got to freezing last night. And so you just bring a lot of layers. I've never really um, winter camped before. But here's, here's why this even happened in the first place. About... Three months ago, some friends of ours said, hey, you know, you should come. What are you doing for New Year's? I'm like, well, you know, we're whatever, not doing anything. They said, well, every year, and we've done it for the past 15 years, we go to this campground, a Big Sur, and we ring in New Year's there, and our family's going, and, you know, these are some new friends of ours. They're like, you should come too. And so we booked our tent cabin. And then, I don't know, probably about a month and a half, two months ago, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but somewhere around there, I got uh, contacted by Tom Merritt, who Tom Merritt and I, you know, we have we go way back. I, I did Buzz Out Loud with Tom. We're, we're friends. Um, and so he reached out and said, hey, Diamond Club's doing this fundraiser, which, you know, y'all are watching right now. And uh, would you be interested in spending an hour of your New Year's uh, doing this? And at that moment, like it never crossed my mind that a month or two prior to that, I had said, we had said yes to this camping trip. I just in my mind was like, oh, well, we never really do anything on New Year's. So of course I can put, do an hour. Let's do it. Let's go. I love the cause. Let's do this. And it wasn't until Thanksgiving when I was on the phone with my mom and, uh, you know, wishing her a happy Thanksgiving. We were talking. She's like, well, what are you doing for New Year's? And I was like, oh, I'm going camping, some friends, blah, 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 you know, telling her a little bit about the camping trip. And then it occurred to me that I also had something else happening on, on New Year's. And that was this that you're watching right now. And I just, I had one of those moments where, you know, you feel your heart drop out of your chest and into your toes. You're just like, oh, like all the rudge, the blood just rushed out of my head and down my body. And I was just like, what the heck am I going to do? I am like out in the middle of nowhere camping on the same day that I've committed to this thing. And I was, I was fully committed to figure it out. If I had to drive back to Petaluma and do it, I was going to do it. I was like, I'm sorry, you know, to apologize to my wife. I was like, I got to do this thing. <laughs> Turns out I didn't have to do that. 45 minutes North of, of the campground is Carmel by the sea. And there's a workspace that I rented out for, for the, 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 you know, this couple of hours called the works. And that's where I'm at right now. 
That's fascinating. That's too funny. Yeah. So, so when you had told me about this, I was like, oh yeah, I got to do it and completely left my mind. And then like, it was maybe like a week ago, I said to my wife, like, oh, I got to do something on New Year's Eve. And so like, okay, well the kids will be napping. So that's fine. And then, and then like that, that was the morning, Jason, that you told me about all of that. And I just laughed out loud. because that was very funny. Oh but, uh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. But the, oh. I appreciate the dedication, appreciate the dedication, dedication for sure. So. Well, and, and so, you know, then I kind of went through as we were planning for this trip, went through all the stages of like, all right, do I have everything? Do I, because once I'm out at the campground and I've got to come to this workspace, which let's cross our fingers that bandwidth is good and all this kind of yeah. stuff, you know, they, they told me it was great, but they wouldn't really give me any numbers. And I'm, I'm just like, okay, it's, you know, I just got to trust that everything's going to work. And I get to the campground and, you know, realize, oh, I don't have a charger for my laptop. Thankfully, my oh. laptop is fully charged. But I'm running a webcam off of it, this the CR920 or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm running a Mix Pre 3 off of it. Like everything's going into this laptop off of a full charge and running off a battery. Right now I'm at 73%. I think we're I think I'm gonna be fine. I think you should you should lower your brightness on your display. I've done that. I've right. Done okay, that. good. good turned good. off the the right, touch, right. the the uh keyboard. Turn off these, did you turn off blue light uh Bluetooth? Uh ooh, did I turn yeah. off Bluetooth? That's a good one. Yeah. No. Yeah. Thank you for that. It is. So there we go. Oh, I can quit that app. I don't need that thing open. I won't quit <laughs> Skype though. Never quit Skype. But I do have my phone as a backup in case I get to like 22% and I'm like, oh no, it's not going to work. Oh. I got my phone and a Bluetooth headset so I can plug into that. But I don't think that's going to be necessary. It's fascinating. Oh, so like, like living dangerously in the 20, in the 21st century, right? Or yes. 20, yes, yes. Are we, yeah, 21st century, right? We're still in the 21st century. It I might be so. the end of 2021, but it's still the 21st century. Oh. Oh my oh goodness. god. So just so you know, just so that we have this on on uh, your all, all your radar here, we have 15 minutes and thank you Ren Igu uh in chat for this. 15 minutes until uh 2022 in the following areas. Pakistan, some regions of Russia, much of Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Maldives, French Southern Territories, and small a uh, small region of Antarctica. Small region of Antarctica. This one's for you. <laughs> in 15 minutes. That's all. Let's just in keep 15 that in minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we did get a question up in up in the chat. I wanted to, oh, I didn't we... want to miss. Uh, Del Noche 77 asked, pertaining to pinball, do I like V V pin at all, or am I a purist? Um, so virtual pinball, I, I enjoy virtual pinball. Um, I, I don't play it as much, but not because I'm not a pure, uh, because I'm a purist just because I don't have the, the rig currently set up for it. And like, and, you know, and, and, you know, kind of standard pin going to a bar playing standard pinball is more kind of my, my thing, but I've seen a lot of really cool, uh, setups and like virtual pin tables and stuff like that. We actually use virtual pin pinball to help us, uh, do a lot of the work that we do for Scorbit, um, which is my pinball company, um, because a lot of it, like we have to identify what the rules are and like the different, like th what happens when you get a jackpot in a game and stuff like that. And you can't own every game, but luckily thanks to the VPIN community, uh, there's all these, you know, ROMs of all the games that are out there and we can, you know, uh, safely replicate it in our lab. Um, so I'm pro VPIN. I think it's very, very cool. So, yeah. And to give context, everybody, I, I co-founded a company with uh, Jay Adelson, who uh, was, was the CEO of Dig and the uh, co-founder of Vision Three, um, along with um, uh, Brian O'Neill, who worked at Dig um, and then previously was at Slack uh, uh, for a long time. Um, but we started a company called uh, Scorbit, which you go check out at Scorbit.io. Um, and I don't want to plug too much here on a charity one, but just to give the context. Um, yeah. But you know, basically, we 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 came up, we uh, developed a mobile app to let you find where to play pinball and keep track of your scores. But then we made a device called the Scorbitron, uh, which you can put. <laughs> I love that name, by the yeah. way. Oh, I it, love it. It, it, it's my it's my marketing uh, masterstroke. It's probably the best thing I've ever done. Was like we, <laughs> we named the we named the company Scorbit, which is like a a combination of score and orbit. You know, because an orbit yes. is like in a pinball machine when you hit the ball and it goes all the way around the play field. That's called an orbit. Oh, and so, that's great. See, yeah, that's so, that's a context I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. But people who know pinball, they get it, and so which is cool. But then, so we had Scorbit. Then, then we made this device that goes inside pinball machines that um, connects them to the internet, basically. So instead of like having to manually type in your score, it automatically sucks it from the machine. Um, and so we call that the Scorbitron. 
And then when you have a Scorbitron in your machine, you can then use Scorbit Vision, which is our set of tools for live streamers and for other folks like that to do visualizations and like put their scores on Twitch and things like that automatically. Um, so yeah, so like it's, we've had tons of fun with the naming and all that part of that stuff. So uh, yeah. How do you feel about um, about uh, digital uh, pinball? Like, you know, there, there's MAME for arcade yeah machines and stuff and then i know that there's also kind of like digital representations of pinball and hardware that is designed to replicate a real pinball experience but with a digital kind of feed yeah. into it is that right have you played one of those and what's yeah, it like yeah no, i played i played a lot of them um the uh you know and that goes back to virtual pin is one of those as well so virtual pin is a, is basically like the raw, the the pin mame you know pin mame is a is a is a tool that does does it for it, but it's basically installing the ROMs and uh, you know things like that. Um, and again, it's cool because you could essentially have any game ever made. You know, because like a pinball machine right. will cost anywhere from a thousand dollars to fifteen thousand dollars, depending on the machine that you're buying. And not everyone can afford that. Um, but uh, you know, the 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 digital pinball allows people to experience that. I know that when I was first getting into competitive pinball. Um, there's an app called Pinball Arcade, which basically takes all that virtual pinball, put it into an app, and you could play with your phone or with a tablet. And I actually did a lot of like practicing. Like I knew that I was going, I was going to another city to play in a tournament that had 10 games I've never played before. So they're available on the app. Let me play them to get a sense of the rules, to get a sense of how they work, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so I think I think they're pretty cool. There's other pinball apps like Zen Pinball and things like that where they're making pinball games that are completely digital like they don't exist in the mm -hmm. real world um and when they first came out it was sketchy because they didn't quite have the physics down but all these companies that have done it have figured out the physics of it and like and that's the thing when you play pinball it's like you hit the ball at a certain angle you instinctively can tell what's going to happen based off the way you hit it how it's going to bounce and all that sort of stuff and and when playing digital pinball you want to see that same kind of um you know physics in, in play um, so whenever I play an app that does pinball or digital pinball or stuff like that, it's always, um, uh, you know, looking, what is the physics like? And if the physics are good, right. then the game is good. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, pin pinball is literally all about physics, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> that's all about how the, how the ball does the crazy things that it does. I see what looking at like a really well-designed pinball machine is kind of like watching fireworks. Like it's, it's really kind of impressive what happens inside that glass. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun and it's, it's a fun hobby. I mean, Lord knows I played it a lot more before the pandemic and before I had kids. Uh, but, uh, but even now I, I play whenever I can. So it's, it's, it's like, what are the things, um, what are the things that we like to do other than my problem is, is that I tend to turn hobbies into work. Right. Like I enjoyed, yeah. I, I enjoyed comic books and then I started my fanboy. And then now oh, I didn't mention my day job. I work at Marvel. So like I work at Marvel, which is like the hub of comic books. Right. So I turned a yeah. hobby into comics and I mean, I'm sorry, I turned a, the hobby of comics into work. I then started a hobby about my hobby with podcasting and then turned that into work. And then I had a hobby <laughs> of pinball and turned that into a job. Right. So like I, I'm, I'm really lacking the hobbies uh, that don't have any sort of, you know, work related to it. But, but Jason, what, what, what about you? Do you have the same kind of bad habit as I do? So, well, I mean, I have done the thing like my, my direct kind of uh, comparison to what you're talking about would be music. Right. And, Prior to podcasting, when I was going to school, you know, I was I was getting a broadcast um, major and, you know, had some recording um, engineering classes and everything. I truly believed that what I was going to do when I graduate was work in a recording studio, um, something involved with music. That was, you know, at a certain point I was like, whoa, wait a minute. You mean I can go to school and I can like work with you know, work in a recording studio with music, with musicians and maybe perform or maybe record people like I could just do that. Like it never occurred to me before that moment. But um after I graduated, the the opportunity that presented itself ultimately, obviously, was working for Cena and doing podcasting, which utilized those those skills, but in a different way. But there was this period in between, in between graduating and moving over to CNET, where I was interning at some recording studios. There was a time there where I was writing music uh, for a composer for an NPR show, which was actually a really cool kind of thing it was it was a cool um assignment i only did it for about a year and a half but it was like every two weeks he'd come to me and he'd say hey 
there, you know, it was all about health. The show was all about health. I think it was called Life, Love, and Health. And he would say, hey, um, we've got a show coming up. It's on mental health, or it's about suicide, or it's about, you know, or <laughs> pick like a good, a cheery, helpful topic. And, um, and I need a song that's 90 seconds that kind of conveys that feeling. And what I realized out of that experience, on one hand, it was it was very challenging, uh, and it was kind of cool to to like try and see if I could do that. And I made some songs that I was really proud of. But on the other hand, I I recognized firsthand what it was like to take this thing that I really was passionate about and suddenly put requirements around it, and to say, hey, this really creative avenue, this creative part of me, instead of me just doing it because I enjoyed it, now suddenly I had to do it. Like I had a deadline. You've got to be creative, and it's got you've got to be creative enough to create this thing that that satisfies my requirements in a week. I need it then. And then it became really stressful. I mean, there were times where it came really easy, but there were times where I just wasn't feeling it. And it was hard work. And I think at the end of that, once the CNET um, opportunity came along, a part of me was kind of like fine with it, it fine with the fact that it wasn't music related because I kind of wanted that music piece for me. And I, I've, I've fluctuated back and forth over the years of thinking like, no, I, I would really love to work with music. And I think at this point in my life, I've just kind of settled on the fact that, you know what? Um, you know, let's not mix church and state. Like my music is the thing I do because it makes me feel fulfilled and, and I can create whatever I want, whether it's good or bad, it really doesn't matter. It's just the process and my enjoyment of it that really matters at the end of the day. And then I've got this other thing that, you know, I do because I've been doing it for 15 years and I'm good at it and I enjoy it for completely different reasons. So, I think I learned early on that mixing the two um, was dangerous for me. Yeah. Do you have you have you experienced any of that? Um, not that I mean, not that it's dangerous. It's just dangerous in that it it uh, it it takes away my time, right? And so, yeah. Oh, and, I see. You know, and then so now I'm at a point where I don't even have any. Uh, I'm 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 looking for more time to do other things that are recreational. Um, and I, I I know this about myself that I'll like. All right, let's be careful. Let's not turn it into another job. But also, there's not as much time because now I've got three jobs or three or four jobs basically yeah. to do every day. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a blessing and a curse but but hey i could you know it could be a lot worse than working in entertainment and working in comic books which i love and working in tech which i love and working in pinball like it's definitely like i would have i found very early on that i i was unable to work at a job that i wasn't passionate about right like i worked at a you know for a corporate you know kind of entity and that i didn't have a vested interest in and i just it didn't do anything for me so i i realized that like okay i'm my best when i'm passionate and these are the things yeah. i'm passionate about you know? yeah so, that's true yeah. right and that's a good thing to learn about yourself as well yeah. hey um want to make sure and mention uh extra-life.org slash team slash dctv20 one that's where you can go uh to donate right where the, ultimately this is all about this is all about giving everybody who's watching and and listening um a companion through this new year's if you didn't have any plans if you don't have anyone to hang out with or maybe you do and you maybe it's a party who the heck knows maybe you're watching this for 24 solid hours in a, in, a, in a party environment that's great too but ultimately what we're doing is giving you a companion for new year's and also raising money for the children's miracle network hospital so uh go to that url if you haven't already give and hey if you give during this hour like obviously like ron and i you know are happy like we, we don't get any of that money but what we get is the knowledge that like you gave while we were on, which makes us feel like we did yes. our job a little bit. <laughs> exactly. We're doing our best. We're doing, our best. you know, everybody's doing what they can. I'm going to donate as soon as we wrap up. I want to make sure that we get our money in there as well. Um, yeah. And love doing this to celebrate the new year and give back a little. And honestly, when you look at the lineup of people who are doing this, this uh, kind of live stream telethon, you know, I feel lucky to be a part of it. You know, like totally. I, I definitely, yeah. Like, you know, even though Jason, we've been doing it for 11 years and, you know, I've known Tom for, you know, for long, longer than that as, as well as you like i still feel inferior when i'm you know like when, whenever i, know, I go on and just, yeah, exactly exactly we're not worthy <laughs> yeah we've got a it's a it's a good lineup here i'm trying to yeah. pull up the 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 schedule here who do we have coming up after us we are here we are okay so after us Oh, it's Cinema Vention. Okay, oh, so cool. that's coming up. And then right after that, Scott Johnson, Brian Emmett, The Morning Stream, Mike TV, The what VOD a, Squad. What Love a solid it. lineup. I, I, I know. I haven't talked to Scott in a while. I miss Scott. He's awesome. He was uh, yeah. he was a regular contributor on me and Tom's uh 
Twin Peaks podcast, Damn Fine podcast, which is still available. Damn Fine pod- podcast, which is podcasts. a damn fine title for a Twin it Peaks was, podcast. It was, yeah, well. yeah. That yeah. was another took a path. I mean, like, all, if you look at my podcast history, you know, I did iFanboy, but I also did Goodfellas Minute, uh, yeah. w- which with the guys from iFanboy, where we analyzed the movie Goodfellas a minute at a time. Um, and then me and <laughs> Tom Merritt funny. joked, we joked over dinner one night that we said if Twin Peaks ever came back, we had to do a podcast about it. And, and then it Twin happened. Peaks, and then it happened. So, uh, <laughs> So we we stuck to our plan and we did a whole podcast about that, which was uh, it's fun. I I I it's funny because like when I was doing iFanboy regularly and when we were doing um uh we're doing all about Android, I'm like I've I've bandwidth for like one more thing and it's all like yeah. I couldn't have done both of those at the same time, right? So, so. But we are we are two we are two minutes minute. or less than a minute no, away a minute and a half from ringing in the new year, ringing in 2022 in Pakistan and Russia and, uh, and a small cool. region of Antarctica. So, and I'm, and I'm thinking after we ring in the new years, let's talk a little bit about movies. Cause I've been going through a little bit of a, of a Renaissance, uh, yeah. of my own in the past Ooh, couple let, of weeks. I've been I want to hear all about that. We can do a little best of too. We can <laughs> kind of talk about our favorite things of the year. Sure. Uh, that. Yeah. Sure. So. I'd have to. I'd have to conjure up something there. But yes. I mean, it was. That. It's it, it, the the pandemic continues to make this stuff t- challenging. You know, like yeah. definitely. You know, definitely <laughs> not consuming as much as I did in the past. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So one minute yep. until we ring in the new year for Pakistan. Uh, some just some of the regions in Russia, anyways. Uh, much of Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, uh, Maldives, French Southern Territories. Small a small region in our Antarctica. And just because it's a small region doesn't mean it's less important. You are important too, small region of Antarctica. I wish there was a name for this region, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and thank you everyone in chat for keeping us uh, keeping us dialed into that. Yeah. 10? Oh, oh, are we counting down? 10, Ten five, 5, 4, three, two, two, one. one. Happy, Happy New Year! New Year! Oh, no one else is in this office space today. I've got, I'm the only one here, so Happy New Year! I would I would do the same, but my kids are napping, so yeah, uh, don't, I don't I really want to yell. I'll do so. it for us. Yeah. So that was one thing I didn't tell you about this office space. So I got here. Well, actually, I didn't get here. I got to where my navigation took me, which was a completely different building, but had the same name on it. And I'm walking yes. around this level, and there's no one in it. Like, I was just able to walk in. It was an empty office space. I open up one door, and it's all disheveled and everything. I'm like, oh, no. Like, did they close between the time, like, I booked this thing and today? That would have been I amazing. Call, I called the guy, and he's like, oh, I sent you an email yesterday. It's in a different building. I'm not there. We are closed today, but you can just let yourself in. Like, literally, this place is just wide open. Like, anyone yeah. could walk in here and work. Okay. <laughs> well, so if you're in Carmel by the sea and you need a good work, no working space, there you go. Um, I probably so, shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> so, so Ren Agu uh, in the chat says, is, is it still that in the movies villains use Android and the good guys use iPhones? Oh, uh, is that true? I feel like that's a bit of a trope. Um, I, I don't know that I've ever noticed that. I have noticed that too. I have noticed that as well. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's funny because smartphone use in media is hysterical because now we've got product placement. You know, yeah. or like like if you watch Grey's Anatomy, I, I might be the only person here that does, but I do on ABC. But like they all use Surface tablets on that show, and like if you watch the credits, it's like promotional pay- placement by Microsoft, right? Um, which makes sense because they're in Seattle and like that sort of thing. But um, uh, you know, but now you have situations where you know companies are paying to get placed into some stuff. Um, and actually, Ren is right. I was just going to say that Apple doesn't allow villains to does, Apple doesn't allow their the phones to be licensed by use of by by villains. So oh, yeah, exactly. That is, and and you know that's brilliant on Apple's part, but it's also totally devious in its own in its yeah. own right. Yeah, it's like sure. no bad people will ever eat. Use an iPhone. Know, so, Why would we associate our devices with bad people? That's for so, Android. Well, <laughs> well, what what cracks me up now watching TV is seeing um, uh, people using phones and them showing text messages and texting somebody and there's no history. It's like the first time they've ever texted somebody. <laughs> and so, like you know, so I will say, I, I, I you know, I'll comment, you know, it is a Marvel production, but the Hawkeye was the latest one of this. Where like, uh, you know, on the Hawkeye TV show, he goes to text his wife. And and he like texted her and there's no history. I'm like, really? He hasn't yeah. texted his wife before this, really? It, like, it erases. It's yeah. It's an upcoming feature on a new version of Android. It erases after every message. It just yeah, exactly. You know, it's like Duck Duck Go, but for your text messages. <laughs> Isn't would, it Hawkeye? Hawkeye is also the show where everyone was using Galaxy devices, right? 
Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think. Wasn't I don't, it? I don't, I don't, there was there was something recently where everyone on the show had Galaxy devices. Oh, I didn't catch that. I don't think it was. Uh, it might have been Succession. Kuhan Luke in, in chat said uh, all the characters in Succession use Android phones. Um, uh, which which also Kuhan Luke, I will say. Um, on succession, I'm fascinated by the number of phones everyone has. <laughs> like, it feels like everybody, everybody in um, uh, in on that show has mul is juggling multiple phones, which is. <laughs> No. I, well, speaking of great, great things to watch, Succession is like oh. one of my favorite TV shows, hands down, ever. This, it is so good. This season was great. I mean, it's just, I, I mean, a modern King Lear is just like, it's so, it's so, so good. Um, and this season just like, it, 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 it was, it, it like kind of plotted along in the beginning. Like it was a little repetitive the first half as they were dealing with some of the, the you know, the cliffhanger from the previous season. But that mm -hmm. second half of the season was just, was, was fantastic. So. I mean, it. Yeah, it's it's kind of. <laughs> I don't know what it means that I get so much delight out of like the the misery and just douchebaggery of that yeah. show. From and and there are other shows that I've seen where it's that, and I don't enjoy it. But right. for some reason, there's something about the recipe for Succession that I just enjoy it. I enjoy well, and, enjoy and, the hell out of it. And also, like the the representation of wealth in this country right now. Not to get political yeah. or social, yeah, no, or whatever. No, no, no. But like nothing sums it up better than this past season. There was the episode when they all go to the the secret convention to decide who the president uh president the next candidate for president is going to be on the republican yeah. side and when they arrive cousin greg doesn't know he's like he's like what is this and tom goes this is a safe space you know you you, you don't you, you don't have to pretend like you like hamilton and <laughs> and and cousin greg says but i like but i like hamilton, but I and, like and, hamilton. And, and and tom goes sure you do we all do <laughs> right and like that line their is, relationship is so great right I but tom, tom saying we all do you know like it's like publicly we all say because we're supposed to but deep down we don't because we're racist and we're yeah, rich right. and we're like all that like so it just it, it, it's fascinating oh. that show, they nail that show so well yeah yeah okay <laughs> uh, touching back on a point that, that i was wrong and uh kuhan luke thank you for correcting me hawkeye apparently they all had pixels um, they, really? I, I had seen some some sort of news, you know, collection of news stories that mentioned this. I haven't checked it myself. I haven't seen Hawkeye, but apparently, they all use Pixel devices. Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even. I, I'm not even. Um, oh yeah, there it is. Somebody posted on 9to5 Google. Marvel's Hawkeye. So, everyone bought a Pixel. So Google's um, doing it too, apparently. Yeah, well, well, yeah. but Google hasn't said bad guys can't use Pixels. Right. Yeah. That's the difference. So, um, well, what's, what is funny, though, if you're staying in the Marvel world and, and things like that, but in Spider-Man No Way Home, they all have Sony Xperia devices because that's a Sony film. And Sony is very good about getting their own hardware in their own films. Um, so, yeah. So Everybody yeah. has Sony Xperia devices. Right. I, can't uh. still have, I still haven't seen one in the wild. I still I, haven't seen one. Yeah, you know, but the, but the Sony, uh, the Sony Apollo, just will say, yeah, oh, but it's different. You know, outside of the U.S., the U.S. is different for some reason. Sony phones, yep. you know, not much well, of a presence in the U.S. But go elsewhere and you'll see them. That's Ren possible. Ren in the chat room saying Sony phones are underrated. So there, there it is. <laughs> there we go. I suppose so. I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All we've right, had so that. You, we've had that debate many times on the show. So you mentioned you're going through a movie renaissance. Tell tell me more. Yeah. I well, I've I've. Uh, I've been watching a bunch of 80s horror movies lately. Wow. Like I've been on a total 80s horror movie kick. And um and and the more I watch them, the more I want to watch more of them. It, which is not to say that I haven't seen them. Like I'm I would say of all genres, horror is probably my genre. Like I've seen you know and, and what what I've realized, I watched Night of the Comet a couple of nights ago. And I don't know if you remember Night of the Comet, but Vaguely. if you have it Vaguely. It is such an 80s time capsule like it is it is like a perfect 80s time capsule i'm not sure if they meant for it to be that or if they were it like if they were truly in the moment just uh wanted to play up just the ridiculousness of 80s music and 80s style and 80s lingo and 80s everything or if they were just being authentic like this is just now and i think it was the latter but there's just something about that movie and when i watched it i realized I was pretty young when I saw that movie. I was probably, I don't know, if I had to guess, I was probably eight years old. Okay. Seven, seven or eight years old, which makes me realize I started watching horror movies when I was really young. I think the first horror movie I ever watched was The Shining, and I think I was probably seven years old, which wow. 
Uh, that's a really scary movie to watch when you're seven years old. That's, I remember it. I don't, I don't know if that's appropriate, off. my friend. I, like, no, 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 no. I don't <laughs> think it is either. That's what I think is so fascinating thinking about it now. I'm like, where were my parents? Like, why were they letting me watch all of these horror movies? But I remember Night of the Comet, uh, Night of the Creeps. I remember Return of the Living Dead. You know, all, all of these that I've watched now. And I'm watching it through this lens now of remembering how old I was when I watched it the first time. I'm like, holy cow, my parents just really didn't care. Like, they just... They were like, no, you know, no holds barred. Whatever you want to watch, kid, it's cool with me. Well, I mean, admittedly, I mean, this chalks up. I know a lot of, uh, uh, you know, I, I know as an older person, I'm tired of hearing this. I'm tired of saying it as an older person. I'm sure the younger generation are tired of hearing it. But we grew up in a different time. Um, we did. You know, we where, did. Where, totally. where there was a lot more. Um, uh, the chat is making me laugh with the shinning, which is uh, the, the Simpsons. <laughs> the shinning. Uh, the, yes, shinning. the Simpsons, um, yeah. But, um, but with the... Growing up in the 80s, it, there was a lot more leeway given to us, and there was a lot more, lot less parental oversight over, you know. And I think one of the, one of the, one of the best kind of examples, or, or kind of, um, uh, you know, kind of testaments to this was a documentary that's on HBO Max. It's called, um, what is it called? But it's the Action Park documentary. Um, oh yes, uh, yeah, yeah, I so, saw that. Yeah, so so the, 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 it's a documentary about the, the about the amusement park in New Jersey called Action Park, and I grew up in the New York metro area, so I grew up like wanting class to class action, action park. park. Yeah, class action park. That's what it's called because it was dead people. Name. People died and people died there, right? Like so, yep. that's the horrible thing. But um, and uh, the but the whole you know kind of the theme of it was is that parents just weren't paying attention, right? Like you would, you, your friends would be going to action park. You'd be like, can I go? And if your parents were like, yeah, sure, go. And then, you know, and then people, you know, not a lot of people died, a handful of people died, but one person dying is too many as we found out. Um, right. But, but it was kind of like, yeah, well, that's, you know, it's a yeah. risky water park. Like, what are yeah, you going to get? Some people are going to go there and they're going to yeah. die. That's like the excitement of the water park. Yeah. But, but, but even less about specific about the, about the water park. I mean, like it would, you know, it would be, uh, you know, it would be the afternoon. I would just leave the house, and as long as I'm back by dinner, like I wasn't telling my parents what I was doing. I yeah. mean, hell, hell, when I was uh, like, you know, going back to your, you know, kind of watching horror movies, I was never really a horror movie guy. But like going back to Twin Peaks, like I started watching Twin Peaks in seventh grade, right? And then that that let then I that, then I went and rented Blue Velvet. I should not have been watching Blue Velvet in middle school, right? And then I I, I rented Eraserhead. I should not have been watching Eraserhead oh, in middle school. Oh yeah, that right? was a cool, yeah. Well, right? I watched that pretty young too. And and then and then that a lot of a lot me. of that. That then then built up my confidence to be now I'm you know 14 and I'm just hopping the train and going to Manhattan by myself and not telling my parents where I'm going and that led to tying back to music led to going to CBGBs and going to see bands play in the city and like getting involved in the underground kind of music scene that was involved because like nobody was telling me not to right because it was you know and like and like I saw like I literally got off the subway in the village in 1992 or 93 and as I was walking out of the um the the A subway uh, going down towards the Bowery, um, I saw someone get robbed, like at gunpoint, and 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 just all you do, you see it, you turn around, you walk in the other direction. Like my yeah. mantra was just like stay out of trouble. But like yeah. now, I can't even imagine letting my kids out of my eyesight. You know, so it's it's, it's yeah. just different time. I mean, when I hear you kind of you know list off all of those things, what I think is dot dot dot, and you turned out fine. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because I mean, my childhood was very much the same, right? Like, you know, and also one thing, um, one thing that I've realized is our attitudes and by our, I mean, kind of the collective now society, at least here, you know, where I, where I am raising my kids is very focused on the, you know, the screen time thing, like how yeah. much screen time is too much or yes. too little yeah. or whatever. And when we were kids, that was never really an issue. Like screen time was the thing. Like I, right. you know what I mean? Like if, if, if I was at home, I would go into my room, you know, right after school, grab a stack of Oreo cookies and a couple of slices of bologna and cheese and just go into my room, watch TV yeah. until dinner, you know? Well, that, and, then, that, and that was, the, and that was the thing. It was like, it, it screen time wasn't a concept. And like, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't wait to get in front of the computer. I couldn't wait to get in front of the TV. Like I loved it. And I was watching Three's Company in elementary school, which is, you know, very funny, but full of sexual innuendo. Um, yeah. And like, oh, yeah. And, 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 and like inappropriate stuff. But like we turned out fine. And it was but but there's something different now because and I, I have to ask my dad it, how I reacted when they tried to turn the TV off. But like I see I have two three year olds and like and really that's a very young age. Right. Yeah. But like yeah. when we go to turn the TV off, it's like trying to take heroin away from somebody in train spotting. Right. It's like, it, you know, it's yeah. it's it's it's, oh, it's, a, it's a complete meltdown. Um, 
And so, you know, I don't know if I had that meltdown or for, for some reason we had better discipline in turning the stuff off and walking away from it. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I mean, I was watching Star Wars at three, like they put me down from the TV and watch Star Wars as well as Sesame Street, you know, like so. Yep. Um, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Stephen uh, Cogswell in chat says Revenge of the Nerds has values that do not age well. No. That's, I, you know, and that is uh, that is like one example of many. There's a lot of movies in the 80s in particular. And maybe maybe just because the 80s, I feel like, is my generation. Like that's that's where I, you know, much of me was was really shaped. And I grew up in the 80s and everything. But there's a lot of 80s films that when you go back and you watch them through today's mentality and today's kind of evolution you realize oh man that was horrible that was incredibly sexist or that was actually yeah. really racist or that was homophobic or whatever and at the time it did you know that awareness wasn't there but you see yeah. it now you know i've had some films uh, i'm trying to come up with one off the top of my head and i can't but i've i've definitely shown my kids movies from my childhood that I was like, oh man, you got to see this. And then we watch it. And then I spend half the time like explaining why, oh, that's actually, you know, here's the thing about that scene. And you, uh, yeah, that was, that was a horrible statement for that person to say, here's why, you know right. what I mean? Well, yeah, it's, 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 it's being able to communicate the context of the time. I mean, like this came up over the holidays yeah. because, you know, like we, you know, um, and I feel like this comes up every year or, or whatnot, but like those who are aware of the film holiday in, uh, you know, which is, you know, some consider a classic yeah. holiday film, you know, with, um, you know, it's got Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire and it's the first movie that the song White Christmas was in. Um, but there's also a scene in blackface in the movie, right. Which is not yeah. okay now. And like, not good. Um, and, you know, and, and, you know, when my, my sister has, um, my nieces are teenagers and one of them's in college, but I remember a couple of years ago when she watched the first, uh, when she watched uh, breakfast club for the first time, she must've been like 16 or 17. And it's like, Oh, she watched breakfast club. And I was like, Oh my gosh, she shouldn't watch breakfast club. That's not appropriate. But like, I was watching it when I was 15. Like totally. it wasn't, yeah. Yeah. So like, totally. yeah, yeah, it's, it's yep, definitely, I remember it's, watching that one it's definitely younger than I probably should have too. Yeah. Um, should also mention, and thank you, Ren Igo, you're, you're putting in all these helpful things. Um, uh, Cinemaventions, which is after our time slot, actually covers a bunch of the 80s. Nice. Um, so, you know, something to tune in for. But, yeah, Ghostbusters is, an is another one. Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters, is one of those films that, like, like I want to show my kids because I would like to watch it again, you know, in a bit. and I don't know when I'm going to just sit down and, and watch Ghostbusters on my own, at least yeah. not while I'm doing this whole horror movie thing. Um well, I mean, is it a horror movie? Anyways, no, uh, I don't want to get more. Story. Is it's it more like? Is this, it's not science fiction. I mean, what, yeah. what, what is Ghostbusters? It's like I very mean, light. It, I mean, it's light, 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 horror. light horror. Light I mean, horror. Yeah. Because there are ghosts. That's about as horror as it gets. But um, so anyway, Ghost, Ghostbusters genre. So go, if you if you Google Ghostbusters genre, it comes up with comedy, fantasy, science fiction. And oh no, this is a better. And then Wikipedia says a supernatural comedy. That, there we that's go. That's a better word. Supernatural is the word. That's much better. Yeah, that's, that's that's the word. That's but much better. even that has scenes that, uh, like Ren Igu in chat says, don't yeah. age very well. But it, and there's there's just a lot of '80s films that do that. Well, no, nothing. Here's the thing. Nothing ages well. We we people are be watching Secession in 20 years and be like, oh, this didn't age well. They're they're that's they're, true. They're clearly that's true. racist. Yeah, right. You know, so. No, that's actually that. Yeah, that's a really yeah. good point. What are yeah. the things that we're watching now that 20 years from now will be like? I can't can't believe we made that 20 right. years ago if you couldn't make that today i mean i think i think even if you look at some of the 90s content and stuff like that that was out there like i don't think a lot of that flies either you know and it's it's yeah. um you know it's definitely interesting to see there's there's a go, tying it back to tech there's definitely a moore's law-esque effect that's happening with society which mm -hmm. is where like the amount of time between out between something that's not okay and the outrage about it is getting less and less and less Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, whereas, you know, things that were inappropriate had much long, had much longer shelf life back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or people had, had less of a hard time just letting it be and, you know, yeah. pretending like it didn't happen or, or just being kind of ignorant to it, you know, yeah, like, and there's I, a I lot of ignorance. Yeah. And I don't want to steal the thunder on Ghostbusters, but, uh, you know, I saw the, the, the chat about Ghostbusters afterlife. I, I haven't seen it yet because it I wasn't, haven't seen it. yeah. Cause it was theaters only. I'm waiting for it to come to streaming. But, um, it was funny cause I was reading the mixed, I was reading the reviews and the reviews were mixed. Like I saw some really bad reviews, but it seemed like all the reviews are saying, if you're a Ghostbusters fan, though, you'll love it, which is like it's a nostalgia romp with like callbacks and like things like that. But as a standalone film, it doesn't work without the other ones. But like, that's the point. 
right? Like it's yeah, yeah, you know. Although, although I will say, um, my my girls and and my wife, they saw Afterlife opening weekend. They they happened to get free tickets to the movie theater, and so they went and watched it. And they've never seen the original, and they actually all enjoyed it. Did they want? So. Did they want to see the original after seeing that, or? Well, they haven't they haven't uh, pushed me on it. I mean, I, I told them I did mention to them that, oh, this is like a true follow up to the original Ghostbusters from the 80s. But they right. haven't really, you know. Right. Yeah. They haven't pushed the, the case. All right. So. Cool. So. So 80s yeah. horror. I would not have predicted that either. That's fascinating. Uh, <laughs> one second. Let me just say extra dash life dot org slash team slash DC TV 21. I know that's a mouthful. Extra dash life dot org slash team slash dctv21 go there raising money right now for the children's miracle network hospital donate while we're live and then yeah. we actually feel like we're making a difference yeah i, I donated <laughs> and I, they get I, their money i donated during our time and I, I feel lame that it's me that my name is up there saying that ron just donated so please you know knock me out of the the, the top there please <laughs> knock him out of the top <laughs> knock him out of the top yeah um Yes, uh, 80s horror. Yeah, I guess I'm surprising you with many things, Ron. You thought you knew me, but I do. It's fascinating. And I, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of something that I can surprise you with, but I don't really have anything <laughs> that's, uh, that you don't already know about. I'm we are sure all multidimensional, aren't yeah, we? Yeah. I, do yes. have so, I do have some end of the year bad news, that breaking news that just happened. Uh, Betty White passed away. No, are yeah, you serious? At, at age ninety nine, yeah, yeah. Oh man, it's a, it's, a, it's a bummer. Yeah, I'll put it. In, that's I'll put it in the chat. Loss. But yeah, did that um, just just happen? Like, is there just now? Yeah, no, just today. Yeah, no, oh, sad. Oh man, know, yeah. so she, she yeah. dead at ninety nine. Uh, died Friday, reporting to TMZ. So uh, that is a woman who has a legacy, like, and, oh for sure, and, and who has been able to um, find relevance in almost every generation. Yep. Yep. Great, great com comedic, uh, you know, great, com you know, comedic performer. Um, such a great legacy has been so much so short of 100. She was going to turn 100 in January 17th. Um, yeah. uh, we can uh, give her 100. Come on, let's yeah, just give her 100. Just, just she deserves it. it. She worked she, her entire life. <laughs> she deserves it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so uh, OK, so then um, so then confession time. OK. Uh, were you a, ever a fan of the Golden Girls? Did you ever watch the Golden Girls? I, I did watch the Golden Girls. I actually was not, and I actually, I, this is a, this is like one of those horrible things that I don't say in public, but I'll confess here for everybody for charity. Um, I, I'm a little annoyed by like all the Golden Girls love <laughs> over the years, <laughs> like all the memes <laughs> and all stuff like that. I'm glad that everyone likes it, but it never. I watched it; it never really resonated with me. Um, so you know, I acknowledge it, I respect it, but like, nah, not for me. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, d I definitely remember having a Golden Girls. Uh, face. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this was probably smack dab in the middle of my grabbing a stack of Oreo cookies, slice of bologna and cheese, oh, right, going yeah. to my room watching. Well, no, at that time class. period, at that time period though, it probably wasn't in reruns yet. It was probably that was probably on. No, actual. that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. You no, know, what's funny is that is did I ever tell you about um, how I how I listen to tv as a kid did i tell you did i ever tell you this yes story? we've talked about yeah, that yeah and, yeah and you, you and i share that yeah, yeah I, exactly. I could tune into abc on my radio and Ex so at night i felt like i was getting away with something the same thing same thing i wasn't allowed to have a tv in my room so i went to radio shack and i bought a little radio that picked up uh the, the tv band and the only station i could get was abc it was actually the the station in connecticut and there you I, go. Would, I would go to bed at 10 o'clock and i would listen to 30 something in china beach and 2020 and like all the things are on at 10 o'clock on abc every night <laughs> and we felt like we were so smart we like exactly. oh yeah it's like but, we're watching tv but what i love was going to the library to look at the tv guide to try to see pictures from the shows i was watching to try to put faces to the voices so i could at least try to imagine what it looked like yep. was happening or like yep. that sort of thing. <laughs> so yep I mean, oh. ki kids, I mean, yeah, you know, like I, there's part of part of me that like loves the amount of access we have now and the amount of, you know, like you, you, you know, a press of a button and, you know, five ninety nine to a streaming service. You could watch anything. Right. But, um, you know, but there was something about the magic of like there's only a handful of channels. Discovery. 
you yep. you discovery, you watch what's on, you try to you tr you try to remember you try to remember to tune back in, you try to remember to tape things and like taping things. I mean, like Jesus, you know, I've got boxes of tapes of of episodes. I in college totally. I taped I taped every episode of The Simpsons because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to afford cable at some point. I'd still want to be able to watch The Simpsons. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I, so, I had Simpsons tapes for yeah. sure. I had tons of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, Simpsons it's just, and. Friends, yes, had some Friends tapes. Yeah, this is just and, the way, which the is way another we, show that hasn't date hasn't dated very well. Uh, yeah, in exactly. Nineties, nineties humor. There it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, I drove. I was in Manhattan yesterday, and I drove. There's a Friends experience. Uh, you know, kind of like one of those exhibits type thing, and the line was around the block for it, even amidst amidst all the this COVID stuff. But um, uh, yeah, no, just the way we consume media, and especially like our gen, like I feel like our generation of the eighties was the first like. 80s, it was 80s, but it was the first like media savvy generation where like, yeah. you know, where VHS was like a thing and it was affordable and you could have a VCR, you could buy yep. movies, you could buy tapes. And then like, as it went into the Catalog. 90s, pre, yeah, pre-internet, like we were the closest to like internet life pre-internet, which is just like, which formed us like an hour, how we make media and do all that sort of stuff. So I got a lot of that from my dad. Um, he, <laughs> early 80s, we, my family opted for beta over VHS. You know, there was wow. the beta versus VHS wars, right? And you could yeah. go one way or the other. And really at an early enough stage, you truly didn't know which one was going to win. So you just were buying, I don't know why he chose beta, but he did. Yeah. So we had a beta deck. And then at a certain point, VHS was winning, but we still had a beta deck. And so I, I think it's too late for anything to happen for with my dad about this. But so he would, I, I distinctly remember us going to the video store every weekend and we would rent a VHS deck and we would rent a stack of movies Yep. and he would bring it home, plug it into the beta deck and record them all. Yep. And so we ended up, we were the house on the street that if you went over, you could watch like any movie because, you know, just like like stacks upon stacks of beta tapes yep. with all sorts of movies. Night of the Comet was one of them. Nice. So, yeah. Touching back, like this Going is how I this back, is how yep. I got exposed to like far too many movies that I had no business watching at a very young age because we had them all. Oh. And at any point I could pull them out and I could watch them. And so what I realized as I've gotten older, like I've got the box of cassettes, right? Of my own music work and, and whatever. Video cassettes, I was, you know, I would record everything. I realized I learned it from my dad because I watched him yeah. recording and cataloging and labeling and sorting all of this, all of these movies and everything. I'm like, wow, you know, he in a way, Dad, you were ahead of your time. Everybody started pirating 10 years later. Yeah. <laughs> um, so quick note, five minutes until New Year's in Afghanistan. So five. I feel, I feel like I feel like that's a clash song, like some B-side from a from the clash. Five <laughs> minutes New, till New, New Year's New in Year's Afghanistan. New Year's in Afghanistan, right? I love that song. But, it should um, be a song. Yeah, that's um, good. It's but got Jason, a nice yeah, to it. my dad was right there too. We chose VHS. We had a big Panasonic top loader VHS, but like everything that was ever on TV, like we had that remote that wasn't wireless that had the wire that went back to the TV that would just pause. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's like my copy of star Wars that I grew up watching was, was from, uh, uh, CBS playing star Wars as the Sunday night movie. And my dad just editing out the commercials. Right. Yeah. So like every couple of minutes, there'd be like zip, you know, there'd be like static because, yeah. And, the, and he actually got to be quick on the on the yeah. comeback. Otherwise, actually, you miss the. And, yeah. and he actually caught a little bit of Dan Rather giving a quick news update on the Iran Iraq war. Right. Like, so uh -huh, like, yeah, uh -huh. but it, it just uh, it's fascinating how just everything has changed. And that's. A, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ritual misery. Hello. Uh, you're famous. Ritual misery uh, says in chat. H. HBO never had a free weekend that didn't involve us buying a stack of blank VHS yep. cassettes. I forgot about the free HBO weekends. That's totally true. Yep. You're like, all right, what am I going to get this weekend? Oh, man. Let's do it. What a crazy uh, time. And also, Princess Delirium, this is, a, this is a good point. You could record your shows and rewatch them. Earlier generations were entirely at the mercy of TV programmers. Yep. Like... That is so true. Before the, you know, it's it's something that obviously current generations take completely for granted. Even in our generation, we take it for granted because for the majority of my childhood, I had the ability to time shift. It required yeah. some effort. But prior to that, if it was live, that was your only that shot. That was the only your shot. Your only shot you was to tune in at seven. And if you didn't tape it, you missed it. And you just, and like nothing was worse than going to school the next day and everyone watched something that you missed or like, and, oh. and, and also when you had one TV in the household, like 
we watched what my dad was watching. Like that was like, it wasn't, you know, you wanted to watch something. It wasn't until I got, totally. to, I got into a ton of trouble. Cause finally in eighth grade, I ran another coax line through the basement up to my room and drilled a hole and pushed the cable up. And like my dad came home and I, I got read the riot act. Cause I'm not, you drilled into the floor. What have you like, like but I, I finally got fed but up. And I, I, I did it myself. <laughs> that, that was asking for, uh, asking for forgiveness instead of asking for permission. Exactly. And in the end you chose right because in the end you still got it right yep yep exactly i still like got yeah it. I'm, I'm mad at you but i mean the hole's already there i went to okay I went fine to, and i went to radio shack and i got a convert because i had an old monitor a computer monitor that i used as the, as the tv but i had to get a converter the coax into the rgb can it was hey. great oh yeah oh man yeah so that's good. smart yeah, that's smart did, did you ever have those little those little uh tv switch consoles that has all the channel numbers and the, and the little rows. switcher the three yep. rows yep, exactly, and, and if yeah. you push down two you can get in between the yep. the frequencies and sometimes tune in channels that you're not supposed to which like i feel like is channel. like a, is like a little like matrixy like you could get in between the channels <laughs> yes, and see them totally. both at the same time and that's sort of yeah like or if you hit the thing hard enough you could get the static to go like yeah. vertically so you, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Not, that I, not that i ever tried not that i ever like <laughs> uh screw that i definitely tried i i reveled in in that that ability oh, I, I thought that was awesome I, the, and which goes back to what you were saying right this like the the magic of discovery now everything is relatively easy to find you know and and it's all laid out and it's very uh it's very user friendly and everything like that back then like you kind of had to talk to the person or you kind of had to experiment in order to find yeah. the fact that if you do press down those two things you get in between the the frequency yep. and that might tune in that channel you're not supposed to have access to i mean it was magic it was like holy crap i just figured this thing out i'm gonna be watching this all the time whatever yep. this is yeah. Oh, man, radio I Shack. That was Radio Shack. Deuce Gone Wild. Totally. Mine was a Radio Shack flipper. Yeah. I had a Radio Shack down the street. And I remember riding my bike to the Radio Shack just to play their TRS 80s and play the games in the store and for as long as I could until they kicked me out. Uh, all right. One minute until 2022 in Afghanistan. Uh, New Year's in Afghanistan by the Clash. Um, uh, I do miss Radio Shack. I miss Radio Shack a lot. Uh, you could do yeah, so that that yeah. was that was like a store of discovery. Right? I would just go when I was bored, you know. Yeah, like it was totally. Like, oh, me too. Yeah, it was great. Good me times. too. Now yeah. they're in crypto, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Are they really? It, Who is it in crypto, crypto play? Who is I it? Don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. All right, getting close to ringing in the new year in Afghanistan. No, right around the corner. Afghanistan is safe and ready for a nice 2022. I know a little tumultuous there this year, but hopefully yeah. it's a little quieter now. The airport yeah. is running a little normally. Yeah. Oh, man. So 10. 10 second countdown. Oh. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I hope That's no one else is in this office space. <laughs> the work's going off. Oh yeah. How oh, excited. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Congratulations, Afghanistan. Congratulations, world, for making it, it to 2022. We made it. For the most part, we yeah we haven't made it here yet. I'm very curious to find out what New Year's uh, Eve celebration is going to be like at a really cold campground. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, my New Year's Eve celebration is to run a uh, previous year ball drop at 7 p.m. on YouTube for my kids, and then go to bed at ni like nine. So that's, that's the beauty of being a parent, right? New Year's New Year's celebration can happen as early as you want it to. Exactly. It's like, yeah. Exactly. They have no okay. context. They have no. They, context. they don't even know. Yeah, totally. <laughs> as they get a little older, you'll get the uh, the the bubbling uh, apple cider. And then they'll feel even extra special because you're pouring them something that looks like the drink you're pouring yourself. <laughs> uh, oh, man. We have so, cinema invention on the horizon. Yeah. So you're going to get more uh, movie talk, potentially, yeah. unless, unless uh, you know, unless they decide to go in a different direction. But. So they should be all set to go, he says. So. All right. This has been a lot of fun. Fun, and I should say, uh, definitely fun talking about something that is an android with you yes absolutely absolutely <laughs> we've done the android thing so much yeah. <laughs> all right we gentlemen. need to have an 80s nostalgia podcast that's what we need to do oh that, that'd be great um yeah it looks like looks like tim invention is ready so we are going to send people over there via raid thank you all guys right. so much for jumping on and uh taking us in a direction i don't think any of us expected <laughs> that's, what, that's, no, what we do. Hey. that's what we do that's what we do 
<laughs> didn't, didn't think so either, but you know what? I'm happy we went in that direction. It worked for me. Yep. <laughs> happy New Year. Thank you so much for involving us. This was a lot of fun, and we're so happy to be um, involved and, and raising money for the Children's Miracle Network Hospital. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the twenty seven hour streamathon will continue. Everybody, jump on uh, on the raid to head over to W Scottus One. He's going to be doing a cinemavention. He had never watched Ghostbusters, the original nineteen eighty four movie, and they're going to talk wow. about it. And, nice, uh, watching. how that's fitting. Watching. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be pretty good. So that that's a it's a fun show, and we're going to kick you over there right now. Bye. All right, and it has. Cool. Popped up. Uh, looks like it. Let's see. Come on, come on. Refresh, refresh. Chat just popped up. All right, guys. That was that was cool. ridiculous. That was so fun. Awesome. Great. All right on. Happy to. Happy to do it. So. Yeah, that was a blast. That was <clears throat> so so worth uh, leaving my campground for. And, 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 <laughs> and, and Jason, what's your battery percentage at now? Yeah, I'm curious. Forty percent, forty percent, not bad, bad considering it. everything that I'm powering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was worried when I got here. I was like, "You've got to be fucking kidding!" Me. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't funny. surprised at all either. I, I I know me well enough to know I'm gonna I'm gonna forget a very critical detail, and I did. But it all worked out. Awesome. Um, all right. Thank you guys, and uh, be free, feel free to tune in for the rest of the. Well, Jason, you're gonna oh. head back to the campground. <laughs> yeah, I, I get nothing. I get zero internet there, so I won't be able to tune in. But thank you for involving us. Really yeah, appreciate it. it. It's a lot of fun. Very yeah. cool. Thanks. All right, gentlemen. All right. I'll catch and you later. Best of luck. Happy New Year. See you.